On day one, I spawned in and ate my way out of a giant pumpkin as a fat dragon with 10 hearts. It looks like I'm way chunkier than the average dragon. It's okay though, because it's what's on the inside that counts. But my thoughts were interrupted by a huge fireball hitting the ground next to me. I managed to dodge it just in time and looked up to see a huge fire dragon floating in the sky above me. Sup, Tubby? What are you doing on my turf? You know this is Chad's place. Who? Chad's the best. Hey, don't call me mean names. And who's this Chad guy? I'm Chad, and I rule. And when I'm flying around here, taking selfies for my red hot fire dragon Insta, I don't want your goofy butt sitting in my background, killing my vibe. But, but, you can't just call me names and kick me out. Uh, yeah I can. I'm Chad the fire dragon. I'm number one. You aren't the first loser I've chased out of here, and you won't be the last, baby. It's fire time. Chad the fire dragon blasted another fireball at me. I dodged again in the nick of time and flapped my wings, flying off into the air and escaping Chad's fire. Yeah, that's right. You better run. Nobody messes with Chad. <sighs> when I'd escaped Chad, I landed for a bit to breathe and calm myself down. That guy was a major jerk. Why would you be mean to someone just because of what they look like? He must be evil. My thoughts were interrupted by a big angry dread beast who thought I looked like a filling snack. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. All I could do was fly off before the dread beast pounced at me. This world doesn't seem too kind. I need to make things better around here before everyone hates on each other. On day two, I landed somewhere that looked a little safer. At least here, nobody would start attacking me for no reason. I need a roof over my head before I can do anything else. Maybe it's time to build myself a fat dragon base. I used some of my natural dragon strength to break down a few trees. It wasn't long before I had enough wood to make myself a wooden pickaxe and a crafting table. Then I used my wooden pickaxe to dig up some stone and create a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. This is exactly what I need to build a base. But first, I need to get myself a sweet treat. I've had a hard couple of days. I've earned it. I flew off to a nearby area and found a delicious looking cake just laying around. The perfect treat. But then, a dread ghoul jumped out of the shadows and started laughing. <laughs> My fiendish plan worked. I knew that a cake would attract a perfect fat little victim. And I was right. Oh, come on! Why is everyone here so judgmental? It's the way of the world, fat dragon! And now you've fallen for my trap! You're all mine! But before the dread ghoul could pounce, I flew away again, all the way back to my base to enjoy my cake. Wait, I got so distracted by the cake that I didn't even start my base! When I landed, I used my stone pickaxe and collected more resources and started building myself a basic base. At least it would give me somewhere to stay at the end of the day. Mm, I should work on a kitchen next. On day three, I decided that I needed to make my base a little bigger. I wasn't the tiniest dragon out there after all, and I needed the base to be roomy to be comfortable in it. So I flew off to a new location to collect more resources. Of course, it wasn't going to be as easy as I'd hoped, because nothing seems to be easy around here. The second I landed, there was an angry looking dread knight waiting for me. Vest, thou art the hefty dragon forsooth. Alec, tis a battle. A battle, good sir. I literally don't understand anything you're saying, but I still feel like you're being mean to me. Thou art correct. Battle me, knave. I was really upset about being called mean names again. Probably. So this time, I was ready to engage in battle. I attacked him with my stone sword until the dread knight gave up and moved away. Thou doth won this time, dragon. But next time, I will have my revenge. Forsooth. Stop saying forsooth. It doesn't make you sound cool or smart. It's just weird. With that, the dread knight ran away. Moments later, a different figure emerged. A big black hippogriff. Oh no. Are you going to say mean things about my weight too? What? Heavens no. I'd never dream of judging someone based on their appearance. That's a total Chad the Dragon move. I'm Buck. Buck the Hippogriff. Wait, Chad the Dragon? You know that guy? Huh, I wish I didn't. He's so conceited. If he was made of cake, he'd probably eat himself. Talk about a selfish meanie. Oh, speaking of cake, I have some back in my base. Come join me. We can share it together. I'm Zozo, by the way. Finally, someone kind around here. You seem hungry already. I'll let you have some of my fish. And let's go, Zozo. I'd made my first friend, and we started back to my base. Things were finally looking up for me. From day four to day five, I returned to my base with Buck the Hippogriff. 
It felt nice to have someone who was so kind in a world that had been so mean to me. Let's build you a room, Buck. Something that really suits your awesome personality. You're too kind, Zozo. You were kind to me first. This is just me getting even. I started expanding my base, creating a nice new room for Buck to stay in. I even made it with an open roof so he could fly out and explore anytime he wanted. This is an awesome room, Zozo. I'm so happy that I met you. You're the coolest fat dragon I've ever seen. You're doing a lot to help boost my confidence, Buck. I love it. But our wholesome friendship moment was interrupted by a bunch of death worms slithering out of the ground towards me. Oh no, I need to do something about this before it ruins my whole base. I ran in and started battling the death worms. Lucky for me, in the battle of worms versus dragons, dragons normally win, and this was no exception. And once the worms were defeated, they dropped some delicious apples onto the ground. Huh, apples and worms, it doesn't normally go that way around. I stashed the apples into my inventory and went back to my base where Buck the Hippogriff and I could hang out. With the death worms taken care of, I could work on expanding and improving my base. Yes. First, I need to make sure I have a fixed source of food, breakfast especially. I'd love some eggs. That's why I built a coop and some fences, then collected a few chickens and let them live inside. Free range, of course, because that's the kindest way to do it. It'll make the eggs taste better too. But while I was out searching for more chickens to add to my teeny tiny chicken farm, I saw the last thing I ever wanted to see, Chad the Fire Dragon. He was flying right above me, looking just as mean and arrogant as ever. Ugh, what are you doing here, chubby? Didn't the Chadmeister tell you that you need to get off the overworld? Maybe go to the nether. That's where all the other weird, ugly beasts hang out. <laughs> nice one, Chad. You can't nice one your own joke, Chad. It doesn't work like that. Chad can do anything that Chad likes. He's the best. I mean, I'm the best. Whatever. Look at what I can do. Suddenly, Chad started growing even bigger and stronger than before. He made even his old self look small. Oh no, you're so huge. How? I've been getting some extra reps in at the gym. It's making me real swole. You'd know this if you followed my fire insta. Like I said, instead, you're gonna deal with my fire. Fire! Chad blasted an even bigger fireball at me. There was no way I could fight him like this. I needed to just get out of here. I flew off as fast as I could, just hoping that Chad wouldn't follow me. Getting rid of him was going to be a lot harder than I thought. From day nine to day 10, I sat in my room at my base, feeling terrible about all the things Chad said to me and how much stronger he was than me. How can I ever expect to stop him from being so horrible to everyone if I can't even stop him from being horrible to me? Buck the Hippogriff seemed to sense that I was upset and came in to comfort me. Zozo, I'm so sorry about all those terrible things that Chad said to you. For what it's worth, he's only like that because deep down, he's so insecure about himself. He wishes he had the kind of confidence you have. Those are kind words, Buck, and they do make me feel a little better. I just feel bad that I wasn't able to defeat him. Maybe what you need is a little inspiration. Go look out into the yard and see a little something I've been working on for you. I ran outside and saw that Buck had been working on a statue. It looked incredible, but it was early enough that I couldn't quite tell what it was yet. Wow, this is amazing. What do you think it's gonna be when it's done? Let me know down in the comments. Buck came up to me again. Amazing work, Buck. I love the statue. What's it going to be? I couldn't give that away. And besides, there's something else you should see. I built you a base upgrade. I looked back at my base and saw that Buck had built me a storage room. The perfect place to store all of our weapons and supplies. Buck, you're the best friend I've ever had. From day 11 to day 12, I decided it was time to rest and recover from the stressful last few days. After all, it's important to take care of yourself and take time off now and then. But while I was sleeping, I started having the strangest dreams. I dreamed of how Chad the Fire Dragon was first created. He crawled out of lava, deep underground, a dragon of pure fire. Whoa, I'm a dragon of pure fire. This is crazy. You think I'm gonna call myself Chad? Yeah, that feels like a good name for me. But everyone was afraid of Chad because he was so big and so dangerous because of his fire powers. Chad felt bad about everyone being afraid of him, so to cover up how bad he felt, he decided to pretend he was confident in a completely over-the-top way. The Chancellor's number one! Ugh. But because Chad's confidence wasn't real, he could only protect it one way, by being mean to others, putting them down to make himself feel better. Everyone is dumb and ugly except me. <laughs> oh yeah, Chad is awesome, and I'm Chad, baby. 
Chad developed such a reputation for being rude and mean, nobody would tell him to stop. And as the years went on, he only got more powerful. Needless to say, it was a really weird dream, but I definitely felt like I knew more about Chad afterwards. I just wish I knew how I could use it against him. From day 13 to day 15, I decided I needed to settle a few old scores to improve my confidence. This fat dragon was through with running away. That's why I flew back to where it all started, to face the dread beast that thought I was an easy snack. Now I was going to show him that fighting me was going to be anything but easy. I landed right next to the dread beast, ready to battle, with the stone sword at the ready. Let's go, dread beast. We'll see who's really feeling the dread when I'm done. The dread beast ran at me, but I didn't budge. I fought back. And this time, I won! And with the XP I got from winning, I leveled up into a bigger, tougher, fatter dragon! Chad is gonna think twice about messing with me now! I've got an entire 30 hearts and a brand new weapon, Dragon Claws! I took to the skies, happier than I'd felt in a long time! From day 16 to day 19, feeling encouraged by all my progress lately, I decided it was time to treat myself to a gear upgrade. I found a nearby mine and went underground, digging until I found some iron ore. Perfect, this is exactly what I needed. But I wasn't alone in the mine because the perfect opposite of a fat dragon was down there waiting for me, a bunch of human skeletons. At least they don't have enough tongue to make any mean jokes about me. I defeated the skeletons, then used my iron ore to smelt and craft an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Looks like my fighting and mining skills have just leveled up. Chad is gonna feel so jealous about this when he finds out. With all my new gear, I went back to my base, feeling better than ever. From day 20 to day 22, I was rudely awakened by Buck storming into the room. Zozo, Zozo, you need to wake up right now. Something terrible is happening. Terrible? Oh no, that doesn't sound good. Quite the opposite, actually. It's terrible. Chad, the fire dragon is waiting for you outside. I think he wants to fight. I got up and ran outside as quickly as I could. And just like Buck had told me, Chad the fire dragon was waiting. Hey, Jabroni, it's the Chadmeister, Chad Geddon, the Central African nation of Chad. And as usual, I'm happy to hand you a big steaming plate of humiliation, baby. You may be a fire dragon, Chad, but I think you're just full of hot air. Are you really saying all this stuff about yourself because you believe it or because you want to believe it? Ooh, look at you, Mr. Big Tubby Head Shrinker. You think you understand the Chadster's brain? The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. You could never even hope to understand what I'm about, and I'm actually super duper confident. You're just way too much of a loser to get that. Sounds like you're not that sure of yourself. I so am! Let's fight, doofus! We charged at each other and began battling. He blew fire at me, but with my new strength since our last battle, I was able to take the heat. That's when I showed him my new claws, swiping at him again and again. He seemed so shocked that I was really fighting back that he broke away from the fight and started to fly off. I didn't really want to fight you that time anyway. Smell you later, fat dragon. It wasn't exactly a true victory, but I'd seen the first crack in Chad's confidence. Maybe I can beat him after all. From day 23 to day 26, I decided that I needed to treat myself to a new enchantment for all my hard work, surviving my first true fight with Chad. Given how much he'd helped me so far, I asked Buck what he thought I should do. Seeing as you got yourself an iron sword a while back, maybe you should apply the sharpness enchantment. Who knows, it might even make your claws more powerful. That's a great idea, Buck. You're always looking out for me. On Buck's suggestion, I crafted and applied the sharpness enchantment. All my weapons were a lot more effective after that. From day 27 to day 31, I got more good news from Buck. Zozo, come take a look. I've been doing some more work on the statue, and I think you're going to love it. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see. I ran out and took a look at the statue. It wasn't done yet, but it was coming along so well. Buck really had a gift for making statues. This looks amazing, Buck. I can't wait to see what it'll be when it's done. That's actually something I wanted to talk to you about, Zozo. The statue is coming along great, but it needs something else. Think you can go get some for me? No problem, Buck. I'll set off immediately. Buck told me what he needed and sent me off to the west. I headed out with my iron pickaxe ready to mine like my life depended on it. It didn't take me long to find the blocks that Buck needed, but there was a wither there waiting for me. Nothing is ever easy around here. I took a few wither skulls, but soon managed to use my claws to turn the tide of the battle. Once the wither was gone, I mined the blocks and went back to my base. Buck was waiting for me. Here, Buck, take these. Thanks, Zozo. This is exactly what I needed. 
From day 32 to day 35, I went out exploring again, wanting to increase my strength and confidence. If there were any quests for me to take, I'd be happy to take them. But my confidence was shaken a little by a huge creeper spider suddenly skittering towards me. This is not how I wanted to spend today. I ran away as the creeper spider exploded, taking out a bunch of blocks beneath it, but thankfully not me. Creepers are one of those problems that take care of themselves. While I was wandering around the explosion scarred area, I saw another strange creature, a rabbit wolf, hopping around and looking worried. Are you okay, Miss Rabbit Wolf? Well, the truth is, no, things are awful right now. Awful? Oh no, what happened? Is there any way I could help? My friend, the rabbit, was kidnapped by the Crimson Phantom. He's a local weirdo who thinks he's a super villain. And if we don't save the rabbit soon, who knows what will happen? We'll never have to find out. Wait here, I'm gonna go save your rabbit friend. And with that, I flew off, ready to become a hero. From day 36 to day 39, I arrived at the location where the wannabe supervillain, the Crimson Phantom, was holding the rabbit. He was every bit as weird as the wolf rabbit had told me. <laughs> it is I, the Crimson Phantom, the Lord of Darkness. I am the most powerful and the evil villain in the overworld, and nothing will stop me from taking control. I am number one. But isn't Chad the fire dragon number one? Oh no, Chad, is he here? No, no, he's not here. I was just talking figuratively. Phew, that's a relief. Almost lost my cool there. Hearing all of that gave me an idea. The Crimson Phantom may not be afraid of me, but he was definitely afraid of our mutual enemy, Chad the fire dragon. Maybe Chad can be useful for once. From day 40 to day 43, I flew out towards the Crimson Phantom and the captured rabbit, trying to look as intimidating as possible. Both of them turned to look at me as I approached. Be gone, fat dragon, for I am the Crimson Phantom, the vilest villain in all of the overworld, and this rabbit belongs to me. Fool, I work for his Chadness, Chad the Fire Dragon, and he is extremely displeased that you're out here tarnishing his rad name. Oh no, oh no, 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 please, please tell his Chadness I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any offense. I'll do whatever he wants, I promise. You'll give up the rabbit and let her go. His Chadness requests your presence. Of course, I'll... Wait, fat dragon? Chad's been making fun of you on his dragon insta for weeks now. You're not with him. You're trying to trick me. Ah, you can't blame me for trying. With my plan foiled, I attacked the Crimson Phantom with my powerful claws. Despite all his bragging, he was one of the easiest enemies I'd ever defeated. You saved me. Thank you so much. I was worried I'd never get away from that awful villain. Don't thank me, Rabbit. You've got a friend who cares a lot about you. As if on cue, the Rabbit Wolf hopped in. Thank you for all you've done, Zozo. Here, take this potion of swiftness. It's the least I could do. You're a true hero. Oh, stop it. You're gonna make me cry. From day 44 to day 49, I gave more materials to Buck the Black Hippogriff so he could continue work on the statue. Great job, Zozo. You're really pulling your weight with this project. I'll take that as a compliment, considering how much my weight is. I mean it, buddy. You're a kind and reliable person. Anyone would be lucky to have you as a friend. Thanks, Buck. Now I feel like a million bucks. There's only one me, Zozo. Just like there's only one you. That's deep, but you knew what I meant. I let Buck continue working on the statue and realized that I was hungry. After all the quests I'd been doing, I had really worked up an appetite. It was time to add something to the base in order to help out with that. A proper kitchen. I'd craft a couple of cooking services and shelves to store ingredients. That way, I'd be able to make the most nutritious meals when I was in the mood for food. It's like they always say, never trust a skinny cook and always trust a fat dragon cook. Once I had completed the kitchen, I went back to see how Buck was doing on the statue. It was starting to look even more like what it was supposed to be. I couldn't wait to see how it would look when it was done. From day 50 to day 53, I was minding my own business at the base when Chad the fire dragon decided to rear his big overinflated head. Oh, hey, Chapster. Still your lame roly-poly self, I see. 
Lucky for you, the Chadmeister decided to take some time out of his busy Insta schedule to instigate a little one-on-one -on -one conflict. Leave me alone already, Chad. I'll fight if I have to, but I didn't wake up this morning choosing violence. Too bad, because Chad the Cool and Rad always chooses to dunk on losers. By the way, when I said one-on-one, -on -one, I meant one-on-several, because I've brought my fans with me. It was true. Chad had rolled up with a bunch of fire guardians who listened to everything he said. They must have been followers by nature. How is it fair to outnumber me, Chad? At least fight your own battles if you're gonna be a bully. Well, sorry. There's so much of you to go around that I thought I should bring more guys. Get up, boys. Chad's fire guardians tried to gang up on me, but I was a fighter now, so I shredded through them with my claws. I was so focused on the fight that I almost didn't see Chad and the other guardians kidnap Buck from the base. Zozo, win that fight and come save me. I know you can. Buck, how low does Chad want to go in order to ruin my life? I took down the rest of the attacking fire guardians like Buck said, and I felt my confidence rising. I grew larger and obtained 60 hearts. I could also breathe out a big blast of fire. Looks like Chad isn't the only one with fire around here. With that, I also set the front yard on fire. From day 54 to day 57, I spent some time putting out the fires left over from the attack on the base. They sure did set a big part of my base on fire, but it didn't bother me that much because I could easily extinguish it. Once I had extinguished the fire, I thought about the one thing I couldn't repair. I need to get Buck back. He always stuck up for me, so I want to do the same for him. I went to the desert to go visit Miss Rabbit Wolf. I knew a thing or two about friendship. And because I helped her rescue her friend not too long ago, she would probably help me rescue mine. I'm so sorry that Buck got taken away by Chad's henchmen. I know exactly how that feels. I want to do something about it, but I don't know where to begin. Why don't you try checking the selfies that Chad posts? There's got to be something in the background that could help you find out where he's taking Buck. That's a good idea. He posts pictures of where he is all the time. It should be easy to find his evil lair from that. You can turn his false confidence into a real weakness. Thanks, Rabbit Wolf. From day 58 to day 62, I went mining for diamonds so I could upgrade my tools. I'm a confident dragon, and I deserve to treat myself to nicer things. Of course, not everyone in the mine agreed with me on that point. There were a bunch of warped phantoms swarming around where I was trying to dig. I could use my fire breath to scatter them, but they'd always come back. This seems like more of a task for my claws. Can't a dragon mine in peace? Once I had cleared out all the warped phantoms, I was able to gather a good amount of diamonds from the cave. I crafted a diamond sword and a diamond pickaxe, both of which would come in handy when the time came for me to go rescue Buck from the clutches of Chad. From day 63 to day 66, I was looking at the unfinished statue and feeling sad that Buck couldn't be here. The two of us had been working together on the statue for a long time now, and seeing that it was unfinished was a reminder that without him, I'd never see what the statue could become. I thought about working on it myself, but that wouldn't do any good. Buck is counting on me to rescue him from Chad. I couldn't back down from facing that terrible bully. For now, the statue needs to wait. Hang on, Buck. I'm gonna find you, wherever you are. And if you want to find more of my awesome adventures, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you'll always be able to. From day 67 to day 70, I found a place that looked a lot like where Chad the Fire Dragon took many of his selfies. The Crimson Gardens were definitely red, like one might expect for a fire dragon, and there also seemed to be a huge lair designed to show off. That's gotta be Chad's pad. As I approached, I noticed that there were a bunch of fire guardians hanging around outside. My guess had to be correct, since those mobs would do anything for Chad's attention, including trying to keep me out of Chad's pad. I knew I was looking at a fight if I tried to get past them. Hey, you guys, is my friend inside there? The fire guardian said nothing and charged me all at once. I knew fire breath wouldn't do any good against creatures of pure fire, so I stuck to melee attacks. Thanks to my increased health, even fighting this many fire guardians wasn't much of a problem. It was true that I'd gotten even bigger and stronger since my other fight with Jed's minions. I'm not just fat, I'm large and in charge. I was able to battle my way through the inside of Chad's pad. I just knew my friend was in here somewhere. From day 71 to day 74, I explored Chad's pad and fought off more of the fire guardians as I did. This base is gigantic. Chad must really enjoy having a lot of space that he doesn't need, all to himself. While I was sneaking around, I saw Chad. He must have been finished taking selfies in a nearby room. 
Oh yeah, Chad rules. The camera loves Chad, and so does everyone else. And Chad, he seemed to be really into his routine at the moment, and it felt awkward to interrupt him. I came here to rescue Buck, not to pick a fight, so I just let him continue bigging himself up. Of course, I couldn't help myself from sneaking some potions of healing from one of his pad's chests. He won't miss it, and besides, he's hurt me enough times that one little potion is the least of what he'd need to do to make up for it. From day 75 to day 78, I managed to find the dungeon where Chad had been keeping Buck. It was time for a good old fashioned prison break. Zozo, you made it. I always knew you had it in you, friend. Thanks, Buck. It was hard making it all the way here without your kind words, but I was still able to do it because I've got confidence in myself now. I used my fire breath to destroy the bars of the prison, setting Buck free. Nicely done. Now let's get out of here. Whoa, 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 who said you could leave? Chad didn't, and if Chad didn't, it doesn't matter who did. <laughs> Chad. Oh no, it was Chad. There was only one thing I could think of to make sure that Buck would be safe from this kidnapping bully jerk. Get out of here, Buck. I'll catch up with you after Chad and I have a talk. With that, Buck ran off, leaving me alone to take on Chad. <laughs> like Chad would talk to you for any reason other than reminding you that you're totally stupid looking. Actually, I meant talk as in fight. Let's work things out like dragons with our claws and fire breath. Can't get enough of Chad's fire breath? Okay, you asked for it. Chad breathed his fire blast at me, but I returned with my own. He was surprised that I could do what he did, but that made sense because he always underestimated me. We started to fight with our claws, and even more than the previous time I was holding my own. I got several good hits in on him before he started to show a little bit of nervousness. What's the matter, Chad? Not able to pretend as well as you normally do? As if Chad needs to pretend. I'm the real deal, Lamo. Check this out. From day 79 to day 84, Chad flexed his dragon muscles and totally hulked out into a super beast of a dragon. Oh yeah, Chad was already the best, but now you can say hello to the even better Super Mega Ultra Deluxe Chadmeister Supreme. Yikes, I didn't expect he'd have another form. Chad totally could have beaten you in his regular form. Chad just didn't feel like it. Right, so he transformed for absolutely no reason at all. I'm really not sure I believe you, but I'm also really afraid of your new form. I ran away as fast as I could. Behind me, I could hear Chad laughing and calling me more mean names. We would see who would be laughing the next time we met, but this time it was definitely Chad who would be laughing. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to base and found that Buck had already made his way back there before me. I was really glad to see him home. The base had not felt the same without him. Did I miss anything, Zozo? I was gone for a long time at Chad's pad. That fire dragon was so annoying and talking about himself the whole time. I'm really glad to be back. I'm glad to hear it, Buck. Sorry you had to go through all that. It wasn't all bad. I did manage to swipe some relaxation supplies from Chad's relaxation room. I bet we could turn these into a room of our own. That sounds awesome. I love relaxation. I got to work on upgrading the base with a brand new relaxation room, while Buck chose to make up for lost time and work on the base's statue. I made sure to put all the right details into the relaxation room, including lots of couches for Buck and I to lounge around on. I bet both of us will really appreciate the work I've done on this room after Buck is done putting together that statue. When I was done with the relaxation room, I went to see the statue and found that it looked absolutely incredible. It was only a statue of me, but I never looked at myself so proudly before. Remember how you feel about yourself at this moment, Zozo. That confidence in who you are, recognizing your own best qualities is the key to defeating Chad. I did almost have him last time, but he's got this new super duper form now, and I think he's gonna knock me out the next time I see him. In that case, you just take what you already like about yourself and make it even more powerful. There's a spell you can cast that will bring your inner strength to the surface. Show him who you really are. From day 90 to day 94, I sought out the book of spells, which was said to contain a spell that would bring my inner strength to the surface. It was located inside of a deep cave that was full of wither spiders. There was a time not so long ago that I wouldn't have dared to fight for myself, especially against such powerful mobs. But if what Buck said about this spell was true, then I couldn't wait to get my inner strength on. I'm becoming more like who I want to be every single day, and there's nothing that some bully can say that would make me feel like I'm less than that. The wither spiders had powerful attacks and could shoot deadly wither skulls, but with my chubby body and huge amount of hearts, I could withstand equally huge amounts of damage. Big is beautiful. I 
burned the spiders away with my fire breath and found my way to the book of spells. This must be the right one. I'll read it when I get back home. From day 95 to day 97, I was back at base, preparing for my showdown with Chad. I was determined to use everything that I had in order to win this fight and overcome that bully once and for all. I knew that I'd be having the fight at his place, so instead of doing any sort of upgrades on my base, I focused on what I would need to do to fight at my best. Potions are the way to go. I can drink a lot of those at once to give myself an advantage. First up was a standard potion of strength to increase the damage of my claws attacks. Second, I chose a potion of regeneration so I could get even more use out of my high amount of hearts. And the third potion that I picked was a potion of fire resistance. Chad is always bragging about his fire, but this should take the heat off of me. On day 98, I decided to relax so that I wouldn't stress out too much about the impending fight I was going to have with Chad. I couldn't let him get into my head, so I made sure to fill my brain with fun and positive feelings. And if you want to feel fun and positive too, you should type ZOZO into the search bar so you can find more of my videos. Also, while it's just us relaxing, go ahead and leave a comment about what I should be next. On day 99, it was time to settle my score with Chad once and for all time. I walked through the Crimson Gardens and straight inside Chad's pad. That mean and nasty fire dragon himself was lying in wait, and he was still in his tricked out new form. Back for more, you little dragon tender? Chad is better than Chad has ever been. This new form is totally awesome and definitely better than anything you could do. I now understand why you decided to take that form, Chad. Cause I'm a beast like that? No, it's because you have something to prove. You may have scared everybody else, but I was able to rattle that fake confidence of yours. You're the one who has actually scared Chad. What? No, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Chad is the man, or the dragon man. Actually, I'm just a dragon. Yes, and I'm just a fat dragon who's got inner strength. I downed my potion and used the book of spells to cast the spell of power and unleash my inner strength. My heart rose to 100, and I now had a mighty tail slap attack. Ready to throw down, Chad. Chad is having second thoughts. I mean, now Chad's the best. Chad will take you out in any form, Tubbo. The fight began, and I whipped him with my new tail slap. He tried his fire breath, of course, but I was resistant. Your fire can't hurt me anymore, and neither can your words. I gave him serious claw strikes and even more tail slaps, then I unleashed my own fire breath. No way. You can't be fire. Chad is fire. Chad is fire as fire. Not anymore. Then I tail slapped Chad one more time, and he was done bothering me. On day 100, I was once again relaxing at the base with Buck the Black Hippogriff. Chad won't bother me or anyone again. I really taught him a lesson. You sure did stand up for yourself, Zozo. And you never let anyone tell you who you should be or how you should look. You said it, Buck. I'm the best at being me, and that's what counts more than anything else. On day one, I spawned into a beautiful cherry blossom forest as a creeper. Oh, wait, why does my stomach hurt? I guess I must be a hungry creeper and a baby hungry creeper at that. Lucky for me, there seem to be lots of apples laying around the forest. That must be why there are so many capuchin monkeys hanging around. Would you guys mind sharing some of your apples with a hungry creeper like me? I'd really appreciate it. That's when I saw a big, scary skeleton striding towards me out of the trees, and he looked like he really meant business. Not so fast, kid. These apples don't belong to these goofy little monkeys. They belong to me, Skeleton of the Overworld. Oh, well, can I please have some apples, your highness? My name's Zozo, and I'm so hungry. Sure, if you can pay up some emeralds, nothing in this world is for free, kid. I don't have any emeralds. Then we have nothing to say to each other. I'm sick of all you freeloaders thinking you can enjoy my food for nothing. Within a hundred days, I'll make sure that nobody can get a single morsel without paying through the nose for it. I'll never let you get away with that. It's not fair on all the hungry people who don't have emeralds. Well, I guess I'll just have to destroy you then. Sorry, kid. Gotta make an example out of people sometimes. The Skeleton unleashed an energy blast. I ran away as fast as I could, but it was already too late for the monkeys and the apples. The blast took them all out. The blast also took me down to two hearts. I ran as fast as I could. I needed to defeat the Skeleton within 100 days or everyone would go hungry. 
On day two, I reached the Sika Woods and stopped for a minute to catch my breath. I could still feel my stomach growling. I wish I'd been able to eat at least one of those apples. But while I was still catching my breath, I got ambushed by some armored skeletons. And something told me that they probably wouldn't have any food for me. Hey, it's that freeloader the Skeleton told us about, boys. We'll teach him to try scrumping our supreme ruler's produce. Attack! The armored skeletons ran towards me, and all I could do was run away. It's not like I had a weapon, and even if I did, I probably would have been too hungry to fight. Eventually, I managed to lose them. Being in this world was already exhausting. And if I don't find a snack soon, I think I'm gonna pass out. That's when a cassowary approached me. From how slowly she walked over, it seemed like she was nervous. You're not with the Skelly King, are you? Gosh, no! I was just running away from him and his minions. I'm Zozo. What's your name? That's a relief. I'm Cassie. Cassie the Cassowary. You look hungry. Come with me. I know someone who can fix you up some free grub. Thank you. That's the best news I've heard all day. On day three, Cassie the Cassowary took me to a cozy little cabin in the middle of Sika Woods. That's where I met the cabin's owner, a friendly straw golem named Stefan. My word, you poor little creeper. You're all skin and bones. How about I give you some of this nice bread? It's fresh out of the oven. Stefan gave me some tasty bread, and it helped fill up my hunger bar. A little bit, anyway. Seems I really was a hungry creeper through and through. Thank you, Stefan. I really needed that. I don't understand why the Skelly King doesn't just let people eat when they're hungry. He'd make a lot more friends that way. Ah, Zozo. But you see, the Skelly King doesn't care about friends. All he cares about are jewels and riches. As a skeleton, he doesn't even need food. He just hoards it for his own benefit. That's awful. How can we stop him? We can stop him by fighting back and making sure all the hungry are fed without having to give in to the Skelly King's evil demands. Making a base would be a good start. Good idea. Thank you again, Stefan. We said our goodbyes to Stefan, and then Cassie and I set off deeper into the Sika Woods. It was time to start building a base. From day four to day five, we started the construction project. Of course, before we could do anything else, we needed tools. That's why I broke down a tree and made myself a wooden pickaxe, which is good for only one thing, mining enough stone to make myself a full set of stone gear, including a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. Finally, I can deal some damage and start building a cool base. I used my pickaxe to harvest more stone and used a stone axe to chop down some more trees, giving me more wood to build with and more space for the foundation of my base. Looks like I'm getting the hang of this. Using all the materials I gathered, I started building a pretty basic starter base with a room for me, a room for Cassie, and a common area to hang out together. When it was done, Cassie and I took a second to appreciate it together. It's not much, but it's a start. I think it looks awesome, Zozo. But as you can probably expect, all this building worked up a real hunger. I did some more exploring until I found myself some delicious carrots to eat. Eh, what's up, Doc? And as soon as I ate the carrots, something amazing happened. I leveled up, getting bigger, stronger, and getting nine hearts. Looks like I power up by eating. That must be why I'm so hungry. From day six to day eight, I decided I needed a change of scenery and traveled out to the Mojave Desert to search for more food. Suddenly, some text appeared. It was my stomach. You have generated one gunpowder? Well, would you look at that? I now actually have one gunpowder in my inventory. I guess it makes sense. I am a creeper after all. I explored for a bit until I was surrounded with hot desert sand all around. Las Vegas should be around here somewhere, and I've heard they have amazing all-you-can-eat buffets. I'm sure my stomach would like that. But I never found Las Vegas or any buffets. Instead, I found a little goblin named Goblo running towards me in a panic. Yeah, stranger, you have to help me. I'm being chased by a desert mummy. Oh no, don't worry, Goblo. Zozo's the name and helping people is my game. Stand back. I charged in, leaving Goblo behind while I searched for the desert mummy. It didn't take long for me to find him. He was running around the desert trying to find Goblo. Instead, he found me. Let's battle, mummy. You should at least be picking on someone my size. The desert mummy attacked. He was one tough cookie, but thankfully, with my stone sword, I was able to get the edge. He dropped a cookie. Well, don't mind if I do. When the desert mummy was defeated, I returned to Goblo. 
Thank you, Zozo. You're a lifesaver. No problem, Goblo. Why was that desert mummy chasing you in the first place? Because I owed his boss, the Skeleton Jackal, some money. When he finds out you defeated the desert mummy, he'll probably just send another. Then we better go have a chat with this Skeleton Jackal personally. And I'm gonna need to break for lunch. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Goblo into the Red Rock Mountains, where he told me the Skeleton Jackal was waiting. You hang back, Goblo. I'll take care of this guy myself, then come back. Yeah, okay, Zozo. Here, take this slingshot. Maybe you can fling some stuff at the Skeleton Jackal. I wish you luck. I kept going until I found the Skeleton Jackal waiting for me. If you're not gonna forgive Goblo's debt, then I guess we're gonna have to fight. I loaded my slingshot with gunpowder and flinged it at him. To my disappointment, nothing happened. Oh well, I guess a good old stone sword will have to do. I charged in with my stone sword, expecting this to be an easy fight, like my battle with the desert mummy. But I was so wrong. It seemed like my attacks were barely doing any damage to the skeleton jackal. He was just too fast and strong. And to make things worse, he started throwing his javelins at me. Ouch, that hurts. I needed to get out of there. So I just turned and ran. I ran until the skeleton jackal was out of sight, then made my way back to Goblo, feeling hungry and ashamed. I'm so sorry, Goblo. I don't think I'm strong enough to take on the skeleton jackal yet. How about you come to my base to lay low? We'll figure something out. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, Zozo. Thank you for helping me. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Goblo. Seeing as only Cassie and I had bedrooms at the moment, I needed to expand my base. I started adding a whole new room for Goblo to sleep in, connected to the common area. After building the room, I furnished it with a bed so Goblo could finally relax. How do you like your new room, Goblo? Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you, Zozo. I feel safe from the skeleton jackal and his goons here. Great. Hopefully it'll keep us safe from the Skelly King and his goons, too. Oh, no. The Skelly King? He's like a hundred times worse than the Skeleton Jackal. I've heard his troops have been going to anywhere that can produce and store food and trying to take it all over. But why? Almost everyone needs food, Zozo. So whoever controls the food controls the world. Then we better start producing and storing our own food just to be safe. With that idea in mind, I started adding a new room to the base, just for storage. Once I built the room, I installed a few chests so we could store as much as possible. I also started mining around my base, finding some iron ore deposits that I could later smelt into ingots. But I was still hungry, and I couldn't just eat iron. So I started adding another new feature to my base, a little chicken farm, filled with some chickens I found around the Sika woods. The chickens would lay eggs and give me a steady supply of ingredients for cooking projects. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to my base and decided to have a much needed chat with Cassie the Cassowary. Cassie, I need your advice. How do you think I should go about getting strong enough to take on the Skelly King? Well, you told me that eating helps you grow and level up. Maybe you need to venture out further and try more exciting foods. The tropical rainforest might have what you're after. That's an amazing idea, Cassie. I took her advice and traveled out to the tropical rainforest. The journey actually made me even hungrier, but lucky for me, I was able to find some sweet berries that reduced my hunger a little bit. But this was immediately followed by a sudden ambush from the Spider Queen. Well, 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 if it isn't Zozo the Hungry Creeper, I expected you to be bigger. I'm working on it. It doesn't matter. The Skelly King sent me to eliminate you. And believe me, no matter how hungry you are, I'm hungrier. The Spider Queen will eat you alive. Without another word, the Spider Queen attacked me. It was a tough battle, but lucky for me, I was able to hold my own and turn the tables on the evil Spider Queen. When she was defeated, she dropped some cotton candy onto the ground. That is sweet. Get it? Because it's candy? Sorry, that is a bad joke. I ate the cotton candy and immediately felt myself growing again, just like Cassie had told me. I was bigger, stronger, and now I had 14 hearts. From day 16 to day 19, needing a break from all the dense woods and forests, I decided to take a stroll through the beautiful rose fields. While exploring, I got hungry and decided to eat some bread from Stefan the Straw Golem that I'd kept in my inventory. When you're going on a long journey, you should always bring snacks, especially when you're a hungry creeper. A little less hungry now, I continued my search through the rose fields until I found a mysterious old chest just sitting around in the middle of the field. Oh, I wonder what's inside. 
I took a peek and found a book titled Mysteries of the Weeping Witch Forest. Most of the pages were blank, but one of them had the words, a man who once walked the Weeping Witch Forest with evil thoughts, found his mind and body twisted, always desiring but never hungry, forever unsatisfied, a creature less than human. Wait, that sounds a lot like the Skele King. Does this mean he has something to do with the Weeping Witch Forest? Before I could finish my thought, a bunch of armored skeletons turned up, looking for a fight. Look, we found the Freeloader again. Let's destroy him for good this time. Maybe the Skele King will give us a raise. The armored skeletons attacked me, but I wasn't a little baby hungry creeper anymore. With my new size, skills, and my stone sword, I was able to defeat every last one of them. Seems like all my hard work is paying off. Now I'm hungry again though, running out of food fast. From day 20 to day 22, I continued through the rose fields. I found a few spiders along the way, but after defeating the spider queen, they were nothing. I think I've earned myself some upgraded equipment after all this. I continued mining into the ground until I found some more iron ore. I then built myself a little furnace out in the field to smelt the ore into ingots, then turned the ingots into a full set of iron gear. First and foremost, an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. I think I'm finally strong enough to settle an old score now. With Goblo's debts in mind and my hunger nagging at me again, I made my journey back to the Red Rock Mountains where the skeleton jackal was once again waiting for me. Ready for a rematch, friendo? The skeleton jackal attacked, but this time I was a lot bigger, stronger, and faster than before, and I had way better weapons. It didn't take me long to defeat the monster, and in doing so, clear all of Goblo's debts. It feels good to help. Now if only it made me less hungry. While I was feeling sorry for myself, the Skele King himself suddenly appeared, walking right up to me. With him there, I certainly didn't feel as confident as I did before. Been enjoying all the free snacks, you sad little mooch? You've been eating on borrowed time, Zozo. You owe me, and I always collect on what I'm owed. I don't understand you, Skele King. I read that you were a person once, before you lost your humanity. Why do you want all this money if you don't even need to buy food with it? To need is weak, and to want is powerful, Zozo. What you have is hunger. It's a sign of your low status. What I have is ambition. Perhaps someday you'll understand that, but I don't expect you to live that long. Mark my words, your days are numbered. And with that, the Skele King disappeared, and I was alone in the Red Rock Mountains with a grumbling stomach once again. From day 23 to day 26, I tried to ignore my grumbling stomach as I returned to my base. I really wanted a snack, but first I had to give Goblo the good news. I found him chilling at the fireplace. Hey, Goblo, guess what? Yeah, what is it, Zozo? I took care of that skeleton jackal, so he won't be sending his goons after you anymore. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for your help. No problem. Now we don't have to worry about any more of those creeps coming after you. Next, I decided to gather materials that would help me improve my base. Also, I wanted to see if I could rustle up another snack. Hmm, some stone blocks. I can use these to build a stone wall around the base and keep the bad guys out. I gathered the stone as well as some coal which I unearthed and got to work building a wall around my base. That looks great, super secure. But I wanna make sure I can see what's going on out here while I'm inside. I know, I'll add some windows. After carrying all that stone, putting in a few windows was a snap. Phew, that really made me work up an appetite. I wandered out into the woods to see what I could find, and suddenly, I spotted a tree filled with what I like to call yellow gold. Bananas, this is the best day I've had so far. I picked up as many bananas as I could find and made sure to eat a few to help fill up my rumbling stomach. After that, I could think much more clearly. As much as I wanted to eat all the bananas, I realized I could use some of them to help upgrade one of my weapons. I know, I'll fuse these with my sword and make a banana sword. No, a banana katana. Hey, that's pretty good. Maybe once the Skele King is defeated, I'll get into comedy. Mmm, it tastes delicious. I just gotta make sure I don't cut my tongue while eating my katana. From day 27 to day 31, I was getting restless hanging around the base. Having no more bananas to eat, it was time to head out and explore a new area to see what snacks I could find. My journey took me all the way out to the ice spikes. <sighs> I wish I'd worn a coat, but I've got my sense of adventure to keep me warm. Plus, it was pretty hard to focus on being cold when I was so hungry. 
As I was walking, I came across some diamonds. Whoa, I can't believe these are out here. I'll grab them and take them home with me. Then I saw something amongst the ice and the bushes and rushed toward it. Maybe it's something I can eat. But as I got closer, I realized it was just Among Us. Oh, sorry to bother you. No bother at all. I was hoping someone would come along to help me. I took a stroll away from my home in the mushroom fields, and I'm afraid I'm hopelessly lost and getting colder by the second. Well, you can warm up at my base if you want. Follow me there. Oh, thank you. Please take these cookies as a token of my thanks. Sweet. Yes, exactly. I showed the Mungus the way back to my base, but we were both still shivering from the cold. We need a bigger fireplace. I quickly upgraded our existing one, and before long we were warming ourselves up by the fire and munching on cookies. This is the good life. Just then, Cassie the Cassowary approached us. Zozo, I need your help. It's Stefan. He's in trouble. We have to go now. From day 32 to day 35, Cassie and I headed to Stefan's cabin in the Sika Woods to see what was going down. Cassie sounded pretty upset, so I knew it was probably pretty bad. When we arrived, I saw why Cassie was so freaked out. The place was swarming with armored skeletons. Zozo, thank goodness you're here. These brutes have been tearing my cabin apart. Don't worry, we'll stop them. I drew my banana katana. I've got my banana katana, so you guys better split. I didn't have time to laugh at my super funny joke. I had to get to work fighting these guys off. There's so many of them. What do we do? We do our best. One of the armored skeletons came at me, but I managed to get in a good hit with my weapon before he could get me. We were so caught up in the fight, we didn't notice the two skeletons that knocked Stefan to the ground. Oh no! I tried to help him, but it was too late. Stefan was gone. You'll pay for this! My anger gave me the strength I needed to finish the fight. And with Cassie offering moral support, we defeated the rest of the armored skeletons. I sadly approached the remains of the straw golem. This is all my fault. I bet these guys were working for the Skele King. It's not your fault, Zozo. It's the bad guys who should be blamed. You're right, Cassie. I need to focus on what matters, stopping the Skele King from taking everyone's food. Speaking of food, I'm getting hungry again. I explored the golem's house for some food, but instead found a crafting table with items placed on top. <gasps> of course, it's the crafting recipe for TNT. I bet shooting TNT with my slingshot will work way better than shooting with gunpowder. From day 36 to day 39, I set off in search of something else to eat. Cassie and I split up so we could cover more ground. I also needed to keep looking for additional ways to defeat the Skele King, but I was pretty sure I could do both at the same time. I couldn't help it. I was just a very hungry creeper. Cassie told me she heard there was food in the Badlands, so that was where I decided to go. But I didn't see any snacks anywhere. Just rocks, sand, cacti, and other non-food plants. Oh man, nothing to eat here. As I was talking to myself, a coyote came up to me. He told me that he needed help finding aloe vera to treat his sunburns. He had spent too much time in the sun without applying sunscreen, and now he had sunburns all over his skin. Sure, I'll help you. Maybe if I found it quick enough, he'd give me a snack in return. No, I, I shouldn't think that. You shouldn't do good deeds just in case someone gives you a gift. You should do them just because it's good to be kind and help others. I spotted the aloe plant, but when I ran over to pick it up, someone jumped out from behind a rock. I am the Desert Lord. Dessert Lord? Mmm, what kind of desserts do you have? Not dessert, you fool. Desert! This is my domain, and everything in it belongs to me, including that aloe plant. Be gone! No can do, buddy. That aloe is required by someone else. Then you must duel me for it. Works for me. I ran toward the Desert Lord and fought him with my banana katana. The duel didn't take very long because my katana broke. What was I thinking? It's made from bananas. Of course the durability is non-existent. I used my axe instead before he fell down and gave up. Then I grabbed the Zimbabwe aloe saplings and took them back to the coyote. He didn't have any snacks for me, but that was okay. It was still nice to help out. Before I left the Badlands, I made sure to stock up on some sand so I can craft more TNT when I get home. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to my base to check things out. 
Hmm, this place is missing something. I know, we need some banners and some bookcases. I quickly got to work adding them. When I was done, I took a look at my new and improved base. Much better. That's when Goblo approached me. Yeah, Zozo, could I ask for a favor? Sure thing, Goblo. What's up? I'm pretty lonely here without any other goblins. Think I could invite some of my gob friends to stay with us for a while? Sure, let me just make them some rooms. I added some extra rooms to the base so Goblo's buddies would have somewhere to stay. It was starting to look like a hotel. Wow. All done, go ahead and invite your friends. While Goblo and the gobs settled in, I crafted as much TNT as I could. I have enough gunpowder for only three? Come on, stomach, you can do better than that. Start making more gunpowder. At least I could craft myself a diamond sword to replace the good old banana katana. My thoughts turned to food again, but my thoughts were interrupted by one of my latest guests, the Mungus, coming over to me with a quest. Hey, Zozo, I have a quest for you. Sure, what is it? I need you to go to the underground mine for me. There is an Anubis there who has been terrorizing my family and keeping them from mining there. I don't like bullies. You've got it, Mungus. I'll make sure he leaves your family alone. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled to the location of the underground mine to look for that Anubis who was giving Mungus so much trouble. I spotted a crane in the distance. This must be it. It was an entire mining site. I headed down into the mine and started to look around. I have to admit, I was also kind of hoping I'd find something to eat too, but the chests there were filled with rubbish. Mostly I was focused on my quest, but I'll never turn down a snack. I ventured deeper, but I didn't see Anubis anywhere. But what I did see was the Skelly King lurking in the mine. Oh. Hey, you've gotten bigger since I last saw you. What did I tell you before, Zozo? No more free snacks. This is the end of that line, kid. You're toast, and you'll never eat toast again without paying me for it first. You're terrible. You let your greed consume everything you do, and then you act like we're all greedy for wanting the smallest things. It's not fair. Life isn't fair. You're either a winner or a loser. Get used to it. And speaking of losing, get ready to lose a fight with one of my best minions. Ha 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 ha! He let out an evil laugh, then ran out of the mine, leaving a terrifying ghost miner behind. I had to be brave, even if I was scared. Whatever, I ain't afraid of no ghost. But when he rushed at me, I could tell he was really strong, and this wasn't going to be an easy fight. From day 50 to day 53, I worked hard to bust the ghost miner and get out of the underground mine alive. I was a little bit worried because I couldn't damage him. My punches went straight through him. And his pickaxe did loads of damage. But it dawned on me, I should blast him away with my TNT. I loaded up my slingshot and kaboom, the ghost was literally blown away. Ha ha, I managed to win after all. As I was looking around the mine after the fight, I saw a chest in the distance. I checked inside, a golden apple. Can I eat this? Only one way to find out. Turns out, I could eat it, and not only was it tasty and gave me some nice buffs, but it gave me some secret knowledge. Suddenly, I knew something else about the Skelly King. So he's hiding all the food he takes in chests at his base. If only I knew where his base was, I could return all the food to the people that need it. That's great! Now I just have to find out where he's hiding and get big and strong enough to stand a chance in a fight with him too. From day 54 to day 57, I climbed deeper into the mine. I couldn't go back to my base until I found that Anubis. After all, I gave Mungus my word that I would complete his quest. Well, all of a sudden, it looked like I would still get the chance because a great big tough Anubis came bolting out at me. Ah, bad dog, bad dog. He knocked into me and it hurt, but I was still alive and I was still strong enough to fight back. I ran back at him and managed to defeat him, even though he was bigger and badder than me. Oh, hey, he dropped something. Suspicious stew. Awesome. I didn't care how suspicious it was. I was starving. I slurped it up and felt myself grow bigger and stronger with 18 hearts now. With my quest complete, I headed back to the base to give Mungus the good news. Thank you so much, Zozo. I have some good news of my own. I heard a rumor that the Skelly King's base is in the Weeping Witch Forest. When you feel strong and ready enough, you should be able to find him there. 
from day 58 to day 62, I was thinking about food again. I wish I had some more eggs, then we can make all kinds of snacks here at the base. Wait a second, if we had some more chickens, we could have more eggs. I went out and found some chickens, then herded them back to the base and put them in the coop with the others. Make friends, little chickens. Then I decided to see if I could upgrade my gear. I went down into the mine and found some more diamonds. Perfect! I used the diamonds to craft a shiny new pair of diamond boots and pants. I feel tougher already! From day 63 to day 66, I tried to come up with a plan for what to do next. I wasn't ready to try and take on the Skele King on his own turf. I needed to get stronger first. Then Goblo came to me with an idea. Eh, say, Zozo, are you still hungry? I'm always hungry. Well, I heard there's some yummy fish to be found in the bayou. Might be a good idea to check it out and see if you can find some. That's a great idea. Thanks to Goblo's tip, I left my base and traveled to the bayou. I was wandering around when an ogre came stomping up to me. I was pretty nervous and got ready for a fight, but he gave me a friendly growl instead. Hi, uh, sorry to bother you, but I could uh, use a little help. You see, there are a bunch of gnarly swamp spiders infesting my house and trying to bite me every time I go inside. Could you uh, get rid of them for me? Sure, after the kind of enemies I've fought lately, I can definitely squash a few spiders. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the ogre to his house, and sure enough, it was crawling with swamp spiders! Yikes, I get why you asked for help! These weren't any ordinary spiders, they were meaner and much more dangerous, but I'd already fought the spider queen, so I knew I could take them! It didn't take long before I defeated every single one of those spiders! Thank you. I, uh, couldn't have done it without your help. All done. Your house should be safe now. Yeah, take this as a, uh, thank you. He handed me some raw salmon. Hey, it's true. There really is fish here. I gobbled up the salmon, and it really hit the spot. Yes. We said our goodbyes, and the ogre went back to cleaning up and living in his house. From day 71 to day 74, I took a walk through the black forest on my way back to my base. As I was looking around, I found a note on the ground. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more adventures like this one. And be sure to search ZOZO to find more awesome videos. After looking at the note, I went back to hunting for something else to eat. I've heard people talk about black forest cake before. Maybe I can find some of that here if I'm lucky but I didn't find any cake. All I found was the Skele King lying in wait for me. There's no more cake left in this forest, Zozo, but I'll give you a slice if you bring me some diamonds first. Never! Then perish. He started throwing bone blocks at me. I tried to dodge them, but a few got me anyway. Uh -oh. Ouch, that really hurt. He's still a lot stronger than me. I don't want to run away, but I'd better get out of here if I want to survive. So I ran out of there as fast as I could before he could do any more damage. Next time I see him, I'll make sure I'm ready. From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back to my base. Thankfully, the Skele King wasn't able to follow me there. I need to do something to take my mind off of that disaster. I looked around and my eyes settled on the garden. Some flowers would make me feel better. So I planted some flowers in the garden and it really cheered me up. Look at all those beautiful flowers. As I was finishing up with the garden, one of the gobs that Goblo invited to the base came over. He thanked me for giving him and the others a place to stay and handed me a steaming hot bowl of mushroom stew as a thank you gift. Yum, this smells great. I quickly ate the stew and grew larger, gaining four more hearts. Wow, I feel so much stronger now. Thanks, Gob, that's a pretty powerful stew. From day 79 to day 84, I headed to the apple orchard to gather some fruit and look for some mobs I could test out my new strength on. I found plenty of both. There are a lot of apples, and there was also the golden devourer. They were hungry little guys, trying to eat all the apples for themselves. Leave some for the rest of us. I taught them a lesson and beat them quickly. I really am stronger. A giant came up to me and told me he saw what I did. He'd been trying to clear those pests out of the apple orchard for days now, and now he and the other people living nearby could finally get some of the apples. I helped him pick some to take back home, and he gave me a piece of mutton in return. I ate the mutton and it tasted great and helped me grow even stronger. 
From day 85 to day 89, I took a leisurely walk back to my base. But when I got there, I was shocked at what I found. There was a big, nasty sectoid queen attacking my base and scaring all of my friends. Hey, you get out of here. But before I could attack, the sectoid queen scuttled off into the woods. Oh, no you don't. I ran after her, but I lost track of her. I saw a bull looking around and thought maybe he could help me. Have you seen a sectoid queen? Yes. If I tell you where she went, will you help me get my cat out of that tree? Sure. Here, kitty kitty. I don't know why, but the cat listened to me and climbed down out of the tree. I guess it could tell I just wanted to help. Thank you. She went that way. He pointed me in the right direction, and I headed off to track down the sectoid queen. From day 90 to day 94, I found the sectoid queen deep in the Sika woods. There you are. Why were you attacking my base? Just following orders from the Skilla King. He sent me after a little loot who's been hoarding snacks without paying for them. When I couldn't find you, I decided to tear apart your house to teach you a lesson. You shouldn't have done that. Now, I'll teach you a lesson. <laughs> you can try. I attacked with my sword, but it was a much harder fight than I expected. Uh-oh, she's really strong. This isn't gonna be easy. The queen seemed to back off and started digging a tunnel into the mountain. I was hurting, so I didn't follow her immediately. Instead, I gathered some berries to replenish my hunger and health before continuing the fight. From day 95 to day 97, I went into the tunnel which led to a dripstone cave where the queen was waiting. I charged her and kept on fighting the sectoid queen. She started spawning regular sized ants around her. Sure, they were small, but they still bite. I was getting pretty tired and I was worried I might not make it out of this one. Might as well give up now. You'll never be a match for the skeleton. That taunt gave me the inspiration I needed to finish up the fight. That is it. No more playing around. Taste the power of TNT. I shot a TNT charge up into the dripstone and it fell right on the sectoid queen. She was done for. Wow, that was a tough one. I saw that the sectoid queen had dropped a throwing axe and I picked it up. Wow, this is a great weapon. It'll help me a lot. There was an inscription on the handle reading, Property of the Skele King. I guess this used to be his throwing axe. Well, he took a lot of things from people who need them. And then he was careless with his own weapon? Finders keepers, I guess. I'll use this to defeat him once and for all. Before I left, I made sure to mine up all the diamonds that were in this cave. This will be just enough diamonds to finish my diamond armor set. On day 98, I took my new throwing axe back home to my base, and to my surprise, my friends fixed up the house back to the way it was before. I started preparing for the final battle. First, I made the rest of my diamond armor. There, now I am well protected. Next, I crafted as much TNT as I could. Thank you, stomach. This gunpowder will be used for good. Now I finally felt ready to take on the Skele King and return the food to the hungry masses. But first, Cassie approached me. Zozo, I'm glad I caught you. I brought you this pineapple to help you get your strength up before your battle. I ate the pie and changed my form into a mutant creeper. Now I look really mighty. I gained even more hearts, up to 40 now. What was in that pineapple? I don't know, but now you can definitely defeat the Skele King. Then came Goblo. Yeah. Thank you for saving my life, Zozo. You have done so much to help so many people, and I just know you'll be the one to free us from the Skele King. Thank you, that means a lot. Of course, the Mungus had something to say. Zozo, I may just be a simple Mungus from Mushroom Fields, but I think you're a really fun guy. Thanks. And even the other gobs wanted to encourage me. Since you liked it so much before, here's some more mushroom stew. Eat up before you leave. I stored the stew for later, and I felt prepared to head out and take back what was rightfully ours. On day 99, I started on my trek to the Weeping Witch Forest, where the Skele King's base was. At first, I wasn't sure where exactly his lair might be, but a bubble parasite pointed me in the right direction. You can do it, Zozo. Thanks, pal. When I arrived at the base, I saw an armored pillager guarding the entrance. How am I gonna get past him? For a second, I thought my plans were doomed until the ogre came running out of the woods. Let me handle him. You take on the Skele King. Ogre, you're here. You didn't think I'd uh, leave you without any backup, did you? I can handle the zombie. Uh, you head on inside. 
On day 100, I ran straight into the Skele King's base. With no more minions to protect him, he would have to fight me himself, one on one. Come on out and face me! It's time for you to be the one who pays! He emerged from his lair at the sound of my taunts! I'm not paying for a thing! You don't know what you're messing with, little creeper! I'm not so little anymore! No, I guess not! You've gotten strong on stolen snacks! Snacks you should have given me emeralds in exchange for! You can't make people pay you for food! It belongs to everyone! Enough talk! I've had enough of your chatter! I'll shut you up once and for all! You know what? I'm still hungry! And there's only one thing that would hit the spot right now! Justice! And with that, I sprang into action and charged at the Skelly King, dealing him a powerful blow! But he was not taking any damage! He had some sort of purple magic protecting him! That's when I noticed purple crystals in the watchtowers! That must be what is protecting him! Just like when you fight the Ender Dragon, I needed to get closer to them! I managed to sprint into his house! I searched for a lever to deactivate the towers, but saw nothing! Just his bed and his throne! He did have TNT on display! That is it! Who needs a lever? I can just shoot TNT at the crystals! I had no time to waste! The Skele King came into the house and landed some good hits on me! I ran to the first tower and launched TNT right into the crystal! The Skele King didn't seem to like that explosion! I ran to the next tower while Skele King chased me! Soon the second tower was also down! Just one more! The Skele King almost caught up to me, but he was too late! I successfully destroyed all the crystals and his magical protection had disappeared! He stepped back, injured! No! You're weak! You're tiny! I own you! I own everyone! Everything! Maybe you did own everything, but I'm here to take it all back! I threw my throwing axe as hard as I could, and it hit, knocking him out! And that was that! The Skele King had been dethroned! Time to take all of this food and get it back to the people who need it! In that moment, I didn't feel hungry anymore, and I knew that as long as I had anything to say about it, no one in the world would ever go hungry again. On day one, I spawned into the autumnal valley as an itty bitty baby Steve! Ah, this is no fun! Who wants to be a baby? I'm so small and weak! At least the valley was peaceful, and I was surrounded by adorable fluffy mystery sheep! They comforted me in my frightened baby state! Suddenly, a huge gold-plated bully walks towards me! Just seeing him made me feel nervous! Well, looky here! If it isn't the new meat! A silly little baby, thinking he can just wander around the fields! But I'm Midas, and these are my fields, dork! And there are no babies allowed! I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, mister! I didn't mean to trespass! My name's Zozo! I'm just trying to understand what's happening here! Zozo? Nah, I'm gonna call you Bozo from now on! That's much more fitting for a silly little baby clown like you! Why are you so mean? Cause when you're the strongest, you get to be mean! Like this! He fired an energy blast that vaporized all the mystery sheep around me! I was horrified by it all! That's gonna happen to you too over the next hundred days! Unless you get strong too! I'm gonna get you, Bozo! I felt so mad about how he treated me, but I wasn't strong enough to fight back! All I could do was run away as fast as I could! I don't care what he says! I will get strong enough to stand up for myself in 100 days! On day 2, I continued running through the autumnal field and didn't stop until I was absolutely sure that Midas the Bully wasn't somewhere behind me! Phew! That was a close one! I only have five hearts, so I can't afford to let someone as powerful as him get the jump on me like that! I still feel terrible for those mystery sheep, though! My knees started to hurt from all the running, so I started crawling around! The autumnal valley didn't seem so sweet and peaceful anymore! To a little baby like me, everything seemed almost too scary to handle! I hope I can find someone around here who will agree to help me! But because I wasn't very lucky, I instead ran into a group of mean-looking skeleton jackals! Excuse me, guys, but would any of you be able to help a little baby like me? I'm lost and afraid! But the skeleton jackals just started laughing and laughing! Oh, this is priceless! What a little baby dork! You must be Bozo! Midas told us all about you when he sent us out to look for the little lame-o who was trespassing in his valley! 
What? You work for Midas the bully? But why? He's so mean! Sure, he's mean. But if you side with the bully and help him bully others, then they won't bully you! That's a terrible message! We should all stick up for each other! Ha! <laughs> Spoken like a true bozo! Let's get him, boys! I had to run away again because there was no way I could take those guys on! It made me feel so weak and cowardly, but there was nothing else I could do! When I outran the skeleton jackals, I stopped in a clearing to cry. That's when a friendly pig wearing a crown approached me. Are you all right there, little one? No, I'm not. I've only been here for two days, and everyone is mean to me. Oh, that's no good. I'm the King Pig, and I won't stand for any of that sort of rubbish in my kingdom. Come with me, little one. Uh, okay. So I followed the King Pig out of the Autumnal Valley. On day three, the King Pig led me out into the Blue Taiga, where there was a small school building. Do not worry, little Zozo. This is the Blue Taiga School. It is a safe place for children, and a good friend of mine runs it. I entered the school, and that good friend turned out to be the Water Elemental, the teacher who taught anyone passing through the Blue Taiga. Good heavens, you poor thing! Look at you! I'm so sorry that some of the people you've met in the overworld have treated you poorly, Zozo. But I promise that you will always have a safe place here. Thank you, Mr. Water Elemental. It was also very kind of the King Pig to bring me here. It makes me feel a whole lot better after my incident with Midas the Bully and all his goons. Midas, a truly nasty man. An ex-student of mine, actually. I expelled him from the school years ago for bullying other students. As sad as I am to say it, I don't think he'll ever change. What do you think I should do, teacher? Honestly, little Zozo, I think the ultimate solution is to train hard enough that you're strong enough to defeat him for the sake of everyone. There's a nice place called the Amaranth Fields near here that might be a good spot to begin your work. Thank you, Mr. Water Elemental. I won't let you down. So King Pig and I set off for the Amaranth Fields, ready to begin the process of taking Midas the Bully down once and for all. From day four to day five, King Pig and I arrived at the Amaranth Fields. There were enough wide open plains for it to be perfect to make a base. But first, I broke down a tree and made myself a crafting bench and a wooden pickaxe. Then mined into the ground for my first stone blocks. Now I'm feeling less like a baby already. I built myself a furnace, a stone pickaxe, and a stone sword. Uh, King Pig, your highness, is it all right for a baby to hold a sword? It's okay with adult supervision, Zozo. And I'm 47. Well, okay then. I continued mining and collecting stone and wood until I had enough to start building a basic base with a room for me and a room for King Pig. It wasn't much, but it will be enough for now. This base is looking good, Zozo. It's not quite fit for a king just yet, but you're getting there. Then, a problem came up. A small swarm of golden devourers tried attacking my base, and I was forced to use my sword to fight them all off. Get out of here, you nasty little critters. I've had enough meanies this week. But when they were defeated, something amazing happened. I had enough XP to level up, becoming a slightly bigger baby with 20 hearts and the ability to crawl up walls. I guess it makes sense for a baby to be really good at crawling. From day six to day eight, given a little more confidence by my new power and new hearts, I decided to venture out to the mangrove marshes where I could hopefully learn more about being strong and tough. It seemed like a nice enough place until I saw an ancient Egyptian guy being attacked by a nasty bunch of sectoid soldiers. I couldn't let them get away with that. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Baby to the rescue. I pulled out my stone sword and ran in, defeating all the sectoid soldiers with the element of surprise. When I was done, it was just me and the ancient Egyptian left. Thank you very much, my friend. I'm Seth. You saved my life just then. Don't mention it, Seth. I'm Zozo, and I'm just trying to learn to be stronger, so any combat experience is helpful. Well, in that case, we may be able to help each other. You see, Zozo, you may think this is bad, but there's a far worse pest problem out in the Cypress Swampland. Think you can help me deal with it? Of course! Lead the way, Seth! So Seth led the way, and I followed him. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Seth out into the Cypress Swamplands, ready to take on whatever pest problem he was dealing with. I mean, it's only bugs. How scary can it really be? 
I changed my tune when I saw the pest that Seth was talking about. A giant, terrifying mummy scorpion! Okay, this may be a bit more challenging than I thought. While Seth stood back in the shadows, I pulled out my stone sword and ran into battle with the mummy scorpion. But my sword strikes didn't do any damage. But when the mummy scorpion hit back, it took off several hearts in one hit. I needed to get out of there as quickly as possible. I ran away from the angry mummy scorpion, yelling for my life until I was out of there. Seth was waiting for me. So, Zozo, did you manage to defeat the mummy scorpion? I'm so sorry, Seth, but I'm still too much of a baby to defeat him. Want to come back to my base in the meantime? I'm sure we can get something figured out. Thank you, Zozo. That's very kind of you. I'll follow you back. And with that, we headed back towards my base in the Amaranth Fields. From day 11 to day 12, I arrived back at my base with Seth and immediately started working on adding an additional house for him to sleep in. Having two of my new friends here definitely makes me feel safer. After all, baby shouldn't be left alone for too long. Once I was done with Seth's room, he came over to me to share some exciting news. Zozo, since you were so kind as to let me stay on your base with you, I took the liberty of building you a little upgrade. Come with me, I'll show you. Oh, Seth, you really shouldn't have. That's just too kind of you. He led me over to a new room he'd created, a super cool storage area where we could keep gear, weapons, and supplies. This is awesome, Seth, thank you. This room is gonna come in so handy. Perhaps more than you even know, Zozo. I've come to understand that Midas the bully is after you. Don't let the juvenile name fool you. He's an extremely dangerous fighter and magic user. To take him on, you're going to need the best weapons you can muster. Feeling inspired by Seth's words of warning, I made my way to a deep cave not far from my base and started mining. There, I found some iron ore, which I took back to the furnace on my base and smelted into iron ingots. Before I knew it, I had an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. A baby with an iron sword? This is just crazy, but I guess I'll go with it. And of course, a sword is no good if you don't have supplies. That's why I made a paddock on my base and herded some mystery sheep into it. After all, you never know when you're gonna need the wool. From day 13 to day 15, I wasn't sure what I needed to do to get stronger, so I went to my oldest friend, King Pig. Your Majesty, I'm not sure how to get strong enough to defeat Midas the Bully. I know I've got a better sword now, but I'm still a tiny, weak baby. Well, one of the best ways to grow big and strong is to have a healthy diet, my boy. And for what it's worth, I've heard the delicious apples on the Dover Mountains have particularly special properties. Then I'll head straight to the Dover Mountains. Thank you, King Pig. But the journey up and into the Dover Mountains wasn't easy. Thankfully, due to my climbing ability, I didn't fall, but it still took me a whole day just to get up there. And when I did, I noticed something terrible. There were apple trees, but no apples. Where could they have gone? That's when I turned and saw a massive skulk scorpion creeping towards me. Oh no, the scorpion must have eaten all the apples. It attacked me and I needed to fend it off with my new iron sword. It was hard work for a little baby, but I still managed to defeat it. And when it went down, it dropped a special Dover Mountain apple. Time for a post-victory snack. When I ate the apple, I immediately started growing and becoming more powerful. I now had 50 hearts and the ability to quickly build walls. I'm one buff baby now. From day 16 to day 19, I wanted to go somewhere a little less challenging than the Dover Mountains, so I settled for the charming Evergreen Hills instead. Wow, the scenery here is lovely. If only I had a book to just sit around and read, this would be the perfect afternoon. And as if by magic, I ran into a book on the ground. I picked it up and saw that its title was The Tragedy of Midas. This sounds like an educational read. I started reading a passage that said, Once, the one known as Midas was small and weak. He was picked on and grew despite everyone around him. He got strong and grew his fortune, covering himself in gold. He then became a bully himself, just like the ones who bullied him. But my reading was interrupted by a gang of Midas the Bully's skeleton jackals that came towards me. <laughs> Look at that nerd, reading. How'd you like that book, Bozo? Is it teaching you how to be less lame? Oh, it's teaching me that your boss is even more small and insecure than I thought. Hey, nobody gets to talk about Midas that way. He's the number one bully around here. 
Let's get him, boys! The skeleton jackals attacked me, but this time I wasn't going to run away. With my iron sword, I took them on and defeated every last one of them. When I'm done, their number one bully is gonna be the world's biggest zero. From day 20 to day 22, while wandering back towards my baits in the amaranth fields, I was attacked by a group of feral swamp spiders. Thankfully, I was able to defeat them easily with how strong I was getting now. No spider is tough enough to defeat Zozo, even as a little baby. After defeating the swamp spiders, I returned to the deep cave near my base, where I mined some more iron ore. I took it back to my base and used the furnace to smelt it. Then I crafted it into a full set of iron armor. Gotta stay safe out there. With my new sword and my new armor, and with the knowledge that I'd already beaten a skulk scorpion, I went all the way back to the cypress swamplands to settle an old score, defeating the mummy scorpion. He won't chase me away this time. I tracked down the mummy scorpion, and this time I defeated him easily. I felt on top of the world, knowing Seth was going to be so proud of me. Until Midas the bully himself stepped out of the trees. Feel like a big man for wasting some goofy spider, huh, Bozo? You're still just a tiny little baby to me. Midas, why don't you come over here and fight me rather than just calling me mean names? Fight you? <laughs> Kid, I'd squish you like a bug. And believe me, I will someday, but not yet. I want you to become more of a challenge first. Later, Bozo. Midas ran away before I could say another word to him. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to my base, feeling upset for my encounter with Midas, but proud of myself for finally defeating the mummy scorpion. I approached Seth with the good news. Seth, I defeated the mummy scorpion. The Cypress Swamplands are now clear of monsters. That's fantastic, Zozo. Thank you so much. I'm going to do something to repay you for this. Stay tuned. While Seth went to work on some mysterious project, I decided it was now time to improve my sword. I repaired it and applied the fire aspect enchantment, giving my sword a fiery power boost. Once the upgrade on my awesome sword was done, Seth came and led me over to his gift. He'd built a secret underground safe room under the base. Now, if anyone attacks and they're too strong to fight off, we can hide down here and we'll be safe until they leave. This is an amazing upgrade, Seth, and hopefully we'll never need to use it. From day 27 to day 31, I went back out to the evergreen hills where I'd defeated those evil skeleton jackals before, hoping to find something else of use there. Instead, I found a small group of sky lizards sitting around, looking relieved. You! Are you the one they call, uh, Bozo? It's Zozo, actually. Well, Zozo, we wanted to thank you. We heard that you destroyed a group of skeleton jackals here, and those skeleton jackals had been hassling us for years. We just wanted to say thank you. No problem. I just wanted to do the right thing. I'm glad everything is okay now. Ah, uh, well, not exactly everything is okay. We've been hassled by other creatures and monsters too. It's hard to live out here. Then why don't you come live with me for a while? At least until I've defeated Midas the Bully. Thank you, Zozo. We'll head over there immediately. I went back to the base too and decided to get some much needed rest by sitting down on a nearby hill and enjoying the view of my base. Just as I was standing back and appreciating my hard work, King Pig ran over to me in a panic. Zozo, we need to go to the Blue Tiger School immediately. Something terrible is happening. From day 32 to day 35, King Pig and I ran to the Blue Taiga School as fast as we could, but it may have already been too late. The Blue Taiga School was under attack from a swarm of skeleton jackals sent directly by Midas the Bully. Oh no, we need to stop them. I ran in to help, attacking the different skeleton jackals, but I couldn't save the Water Elemental. He was destroyed in the confusion. No, Water Elemental. I went into full rage mode after that, taking out every single one of the skeleton jackals. But even though they were gone, there was no bringing back the water elemental. I'm sorry, King Pig, we lost him. This is a truly terrible day, Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, I went back to the mangrove marshes. I needed to be alone and clear my head. I still felt so guilty about not being able to save the water elemental. But then, as I was traveling through the marshes, I happened upon an air elemental, and he looked like he needed help. 
He reminded me of my old elemental friend, so I really wanted to see if I could help out. I've lived in these marshes for years, but recently a bubble monster moved in, and it's been ruining everything. I may need your help to stop it, Zozo. Of course, Air Elemental. I'll go see what I can do. I ran deeper into the marshes, excited by the thought that I might be able to do a good deed and make a difference. I'm coming for you, bubble monster. When I found the beast, it didn't take long to defeat, especially with a fire aspect enchantment on my sword. Once this dirty bubble was defeated, I ran back to the Air Elemental as fast as I could. You have done me a great kindness, Zozo. In return, I will give you one cryptic clue. Midas lurks in a forgotten place. And with that, the air elemental disappeared. And he was right. That was a very cryptic clue. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to my base and found that King Pig had made an amazing improvement to my base. A statue of the water elemental so we would always remember him. That was so kind of you, King Pig. If the water elemental was here, he'd really appreciate this. Thank you, Zozo. Also, I was wondering if I could ask a favor. My friends, the gold pigs, need to leave my kingdom for a while to be safe from Midas. Can they stay here until we've defeated him? Of course they can. Call them over whenever you're ready, your majesty. And he did. A day later, a group of gold pigs arrived and came to stay in the new house that King Pig had created for them. So many people live here now. It makes me feel so safe. Speaking of people who lived in my base now, one of the sky lizards ran over to me with some exciting news. Zozo, you must head to the flowering ancient forest at once. We believe that Midas the Bully is already there. From day 44 to day 49, I followed the tip from the sky lizard and traveled to the flowering ancient forest to find Midas the Bully. As I was looking for him, Midas himself jumped out from behind a tree. Well, if it isn't Bozo! What's up, little clown? <laughs> I'm not a clown, and you know my name is Zozo. You've been pushing everyone around for too long. We'll see how funny you think it is when I finally stop you from bullying everyone. Pfft. Yeah? Good luck with that, clown. You see my gold armor? No one can get me when I'm wearing this. And once I've got my hands on all the gold, no one will ever be able to stand up to me. All the gold? You're just going to steal it? I'm gonna make everyone so afraid of me that they'll just hand it over like the sad little cowards they are. That's terrible. Too bad, so sad. Anyway, wish I could stick around to kick your butt, but that would be a waste of my time. I'll have my buddy here do it instead. Come on out, Horace. Who's Horus? Me. Horus appeared out of nowhere, and Midas ran off. Uh-oh, this guy seems pretty strong. I knew I was in for a tough fight. From day 50 to day 53, I started my battle against Horus in the flowering ancient forest. He was a lot more powerful than I expected, but I was still holding my own. I had enough yet, bozo. No way, I'm not backing down. Then I guess I'll just have to make you. He hit me hard, knocking me back, and I almost fell over. But I got my balance back and came back at him just as hard. The fire aspect enchantment on my sword helped me finally defeat him, and I took a second to catch my breath. That was a close one. Hey, what's that? Looks like he dropped something. There was a baseball bat on the ground. I've heard these can freeze mobs for a couple of seconds. This is gonna be super useful. I also spotted a part of a book. Hey, this looks like a page from a diary. It says Midas on it. Dear diary, I sure hope no one finds out the reason I wear all of this armor. I'm not a very good fighter. I'm just good at dodging and taking lots of damage. If someone found a way to freeze me or damage my armor, I'd be in big trouble. Good thing I'll never tell anyone my secret. Oh boy, I'm glad I found this. From day 54 to day 57, I got ready to head back to my base. But as I was preparing to leave the flowering ancient forest, an ender creeper ambushed me. Ah, you get out of here, don't blow up on me. I used my new bat to freeze the ender creeper for a few seconds, giving me plenty of time to defeat it before it could explode. This bat is pretty awesome. When I beat it, the ender creeper dropped a potion of strength. I picked it up. Great, I can take this back to my base. With my new bat and my potion of strength, I headed back to my base to tell my friends all about it. 
I found the sky lizard waiting for me there. Hi, Zozo. How did it go? I couldn't defeat Midas yet, but I got this bat and this potion, and I learned some new information that I think will help. That's great news. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to take time to make some improvements to my base. I expanded my paddock to make room for more sheep. We're gonna have so much wool! Sweaters for everyone! Or whatever else we can make with it. Speaking of which, come here, little sheep. Let's give you a haircut. I harvested some wool from the mystery sheep. When I was done with that, I decided to keep the resource gathering train going. I headed down into the mines in the deep cave and started digging. Phew, mining sure is hard work, but it's worth it. As soon as I said that, I found some diamonds. I gathered them and brought them back to my base. I was able to use the diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. I'm making great progress. Look out, Midas. We'll see how your gold does against my diamonds. One of the sky lizards came up to me as I finished crafting my diamond gear. Zozo, come look. I added some more bedrooms to the base in case any more friends need to come and stay here. I followed him and saw all the rooms he had added onto the base. Wow, this must have taken ages. Thank you so much. Anyone who needs a safe place to hide from Midas the Bully can come here now. With the help of my friends, even though I'm a baby, I feel big and strong. From day 63 to day 66, Seth approached me at the base. Zozo, I have information about where Midas might have gone. I heard he likes to stomp on flowers, big meanie that he is. Is there anywhere with lots of pretty flowers he might have gone to? Hmm, I don't know. Wait a second, maybe you should check the flowering enchanted forest. I traveled to the flowering enchanted forest and kept my eyes peeled for the glint of gold that meant Midas the bully was hiding there. I didn't see Midas, but I did see a fire elemental running right at me. Zozo, is that you? Oh geez, no, it's Zozo. I grabbed my sword. I guess you're here to fight me for Midas, huh? What? No, I never work for that guy. I heard you were someone to go to for help. I need help getting this ghost miner to leave me and my family alone. He's trying to kick us out of our house and wants us to give him all of our gold. That's despicable. He must be working for Midas. Don't worry, I'll see what I can do. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the fire elemental to his house. Sure enough, there was a ghost miner trying to break down one of the walls. Looks like my grandma is still inside. Hurry, please. Hold on, Granny Fire Elemental. I'm coming. I got my sword ready and rushed towards the ghost miner. He was chipping away at the wall of the house, but when he saw me coming, he stopped and turned his focus on me. He was strong, definitely the strongest enemy I'd fought so far, but I still managed to finally defeat him. It's safe now. No one will try to destroy your home again. Thank you, Bozo. I'll never forget what you did for us today. No problem. My name is Zozo, though. Could you spread the word? Minus the bully started calling me the wrong name, and I really don't want it to stick. I may be a baby, but I'm no clown. You got it. It's the least I can do. If you ever need a fire elemental, you know where to find me. Or you can just come over for dinner sometime. Yum. Sounds like a plan. From day 71 to day 74, I kept exploring the flowering enchanted forest, keeping an eye out for smushed flowers. I know if I see something that's messed up, Midas can't be far. As I walked, taking in the beautiful scenery, a bee came buzzing by me. Hello, little bee. Hello, Zozo. Say, if you're enjoying this adventure and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and find other adventures by searching ZOZO. Anyway, I've got to buzz off. Bye! Thanks for the tip, B. Now back to searching for that bully. Talking about me, Bozo? I could see Midas just up ahead of me, stomping on a flower. Why would you destroy something so pretty? These flowers aren't hurting anyone. Flowers are for losers and dweebs. Who needs them? You probably love flowers, don't you, Bozo? I could stomp on you just like these flowers. You're just as weak. No, I'm not. I'm getting stronger all the time. Huh. Oh, yeah? You think you're strong enough to fight me? I tried to get my bat so I could freeze him for a few seconds, but I wasn't quick enough. He rushed at me and overwhelmed me. I had to run. I ran to a safer place and stopped to collect my thoughts. Next time I'll be ready. Next time I'll be stronger. That's right. You better run.
From day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base, feeling pretty down about the fight with Midas. All I wanted to do was lie down and take a nap, but I couldn't even fall asleep. I can't believe I had to run away. After I talked all that talk about being stronger, I still wasn't strong enough to take Midas on. Maybe he's right. Maybe I am just a silly little clown baby. I'll never win. Knock, knock. Can I come in? Sure, go ahead. I thought you might want to see some improvements I've made to the base. Come on, take a look. Okay, I'll check it out. While I was gone, King Pig had added a bunch of decorative lanterns to the base. It made the whole place look way nicer. And even though I was still bummed out, it definitely cheered me up. This is really nice and calming in a way. One of the sky lizards came running over to me. Zozo, Zozo, look what I found. It's a potion. I think it'll make you stronger. Try it and see what happens. Sure, I might as well. I drank the potion, and to my surprise, I felt myself getting bigger and stronger. I was growing up. My heart's increased to 100. Thank you. I feel so much better now. I had a tough time before, but I just know I'll be able to take down Midas soon. From day 79 to day 84, I decided to take my new confidence back to the flowering enchanted forest to see if Midas was still there. This time, I'll show him. He'll see that I'm not a clown at all, and he can't pick on me anymore. I looked all around, but I couldn't see Midas anywhere. I saw some sectoid guards, though, and I was able to test out my new strength by fighting them off. It was much easier than fighting the sectoid soldiers from before. I'm definitely getting better at this. When I finished battling the sectoid guards, a rich mummy came to me. Say, old chap, that was impressive. Tell me, how did you become such a talented fighter? Lots of practice, some special potions, and the support of my friends. Righto, splendid work, my lad. A warrior of your caliber deserves the finest quality armor. Why, I have just the thing. I don't have any use for it myself. I have so much wealth already. Please, take this netherite helmet and put it to good use. Really? Thank you so much! No trouble at all, old sport. Give that wretched bully Midas what for. Ta-ta! After giving me the helmet, the rich mummy ran away and disappeared. What a weird guy, but this is a really nice gift. It'll help protect me the next time I see Midas. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, only to find that more of Midas the Bully's skeleton jackals were attacking my base, trying to break down the structures. Hey, me and my friends worked hard on those. How dare you? Oh, this was your house? We thought it was just a big pile of trash someone left in the field. It'll probably look better once we're done. You, you big jerks. I'm not gonna take that. In my pure anger at being attacked like this, I went into a rage frenzy and started knocking them out one by one. But some of them managed to escape during the chaos. I knocked out the remaining ones and decided to give chase. Chasing them outside of my base, I noticed that I wasn't fast enough to catch up. During my chase, I suddenly saw a lone saber-toothed pig just standing around in the field and crying. What's wrong, saber-toothed pig? Those big, mean skeleton jackals came through here, and they called me ugly. And now, I feel horrible about myself. Oh no, that isn't fair. For what it's worth, as saber-toothed pigs go, I think you have a certain handsome charm. But at the end of the day, it's what's on the inside that counts. The only truly ugly thing is to be mean to people. You're right, Zozo. Thank you. That made me feel a lot better. No problem, and if you'll excuse me, I need to chase those meanies down. Go get them, Zozo! From day 90 to day 94, I chased the gang of skeleton jackals into the forgotten forest. Eventually, we found a dead end. I had them backed into a corner. Ready to face the consequences of your bullying ways, skeleton jackals? But they just started laughing at me. You fool! You fell right into our trap! You think we're nasty? Meet Midas' best friend. He's gonna get all the gold now. A huge buff pigless walked in and the skeleton jackals ran off. He must have been Midas' best friend and it was certainly scary to be standing in front of him. You can leave now, there's no need to fight. But pigless didn't seem to listen to me, so I walked in and hit him with my baseball bat. He wasn't even affected. This is gonna be a tough one. From day 95 to day 97, the real fight between me and that huge buff pigless began. 
Every hit from him took down my hearts massively. I was lucky that I had a hundred of them or I would have been doomed. I kept hitting him with my diamond sword until the piglet was finally defeated. And when he went down, he dropped a book, a book I never expected to see. It was marked The Diary of Midas. Wow, another extract from Midas's diary. Piglas must have really been Midas's best friend if he trusted the guy to carry his diary. Of course, I opened up the diary and started reading, and I didn't believe what I was seeing inside. It said, Another day trying to get rid of Zozo. I feel like I'm so anxious all the time. It's so difficult to pretend to be big and tough all the time, but it's the only way people will respect you. Zozo, he seems like he's actually strong, and people like him too. I need to get rid of him quickly, or I think he might actually defeat me. I was blown away by what I'd read. So deep down, Midas is the most scared and insecure of all, and he's afraid that I'll defeat him. If he believes I can, then I believe I can too. I ran back to my base, ready to make the final preparations. I was gonna take down Midas. On day 98, I came back to my base, feeling more motivated than ever to complete my quest and end the reign of the overworld's number one bully once and for all. King Pig, Sky Lizard, and Seth gathered up around me, ready to see me off. It's time, everyone. I'm going to Midas' base to defeat him once and for all and free the land from fear and bullying. Here, here, Zozo. You've always looked out for us, and I'm proud of you for seeing this through all the way. You're a true hero for doing this. I agree. Ever since you first saved me from those sectoids and helped me defeat that mummy scorpion, I knew you had it in you to save the world. You've got a hero spirit, and you can do this. But I don't want to send you into the lion's den. Let me come and help you, Zozo. You shouldn't have to do this alone. It's okay, King Pig. I'm gonna do this myself. Knowing all of you believe in me is enough. On day 99, I made my way across the Dover Mountains, psyching myself up for the final battle against the bully who'd been hassling me for 99 days. I can't wait for this to finally be over so me and my friends can all relax. On my way there, I ran into a yak who was casually grazing. Wish me luck, Mr. Yak. I'm on my way to defeat a major bully. Good luck. Hope you don't get your butt kicked. I kept going until I saw the last thing I wanted to see. A big gang of Midas' skeleton jackals ready to fight. Oh no, even I might be outnumbered here. Think again. I turned and saw that King Pig had been following me the whole time. King Pig, why are you here? Because you need me, clearly. You've helped me a lot since you've come here, Zozo. Now it's time for me to help you. I'll distract all these nasty skeleton jackals. You go take down that big bully. You're the best, King Pig. Let's do this. On day 100, I entered Midas the Bully's lair by using my wall climbing abilities to get in past the walls. All that gold he's taken, you think he'd have invested in some better security. When I went in, Midas was the only one there. He seemed shocked to see me. What? This is impossible! I sent out all my skeleton jackals to stop you. How could you have gotten past them? Because I still have friends, unlike some people around here. Big talk for such a little baby, bozo. I may be a baby, Midas, but I'm not a coward. I know the truth. Piglas was carrying your diary, and I read it. You're afraid of me. You're afraid of everything. And rather than confront that, you're mean to everyone around you. I'm giving you one last chance to be better. You, you read my diary? Oh, for that, I'm gonna pound you, you nasty little baby. This is the end. Well, I can't say I didn't give you a chance. Midas fired an energy blast at me, but I used my quick building skills to build a wall between me and the blast. Now it was time to fight back. I chugged down the potion of strength I received earlier. There was no way he could stop me now. I ran out from behind the wall and took Midas by surprise and bonked him with my bat. Before Midas could stop me, I hit him again and again and again, cutting through his golden armor until the last strike defeated him for good. That's what you get for being a bully. And with Midas gone, the overworld was free to have fun once again. On day one, I spawned into the middle of the Black Forest as Herobrine, Minecraft's spookiest phantom. Well, a baby version of Herobrine anyway. But why am I here? I was on some kind of altar with a sinister robed figure standing and staring at me. 
Yes, yes, my plan worked. This is the growing sign that my powers are growing. Plan? Powers? Who are you? And what's going on here? You don't know the name of your master, boy. I am Dorian, the drowned necromancer, master of the undead. And you are my servant. Servant? I didn't sign up for that. I don't even want to be a ghost. I want to have a body. What you want doesn't matter. Without me, you wouldn't exist. And unless I choose to give you a body in the next 100 days, your spirit will fade away into nothingness. Bow to me, boy. Never! And my name is Zozo. With all my might, I jumped out of the altar and ran off into the forest as fast as I could. I didn't want anything to do with Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and his plan to get more power. I need to work on my plan, getting my body back. When I was convinced that I'd lost Dorian, I hid under a tree for the rest of the day. As a restless spirit, I couldn't even get any rest. Being here, Brian, sure isn't easy. On day two, I decided to further explore the Black Forest. It was dark and spooky, the exact kind of place that a scary spirit like me would be summoned. If I wasn't a ghost myself, I'd be afraid of running into a ghost around here. And, oh geez, I only have five hearts. I thought ghosts were meant to be more durable than this. But I didn't have time to wallow in self-pity for long because a gang of frightening dread liches emerged out of the trees. Why is everyone around here so eerie? We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He gave us new life, so we owe everything to him. Oh, that's just my luck. And I guess you want to kidnap me and take me back to him for his sinister plans. Huh. We didn't expect you to already know this. I guess it saves us some explanation time at least. In the name of Dorian, we come and dare your soul! The Dread Liches punched me! With no weapons and very low health, I didn't have any hope of fighting back against them. Instead, I turned around and ran as quickly as I could. My soul, my rules! The Black Forest seemed dark and infinite, so at least it wasn't difficult to lose those nasty liches. The downside was that I'd gotten lost myself, and as I wandered through the forest, getting more and more creeped out, I ran into a siren! Ah, oh, another ghost! How exciting! Wait, you can see me? Of course I can see you! I'm a psychic! Sarah the Psychic Siren, General Services! Pleased to meet you! So, you're not going to try to steal my soul like everyone else I've met? Steal your soul? Heck no! I'm a huge supporter of spirits' rights! Come with me, my new ghost friend! I'll introduce you to my boss! Finally having met someone nice, I followed Sarah the Psychic Siren through the trees. On day three, Sarah led me through the forest until we came upon a small cottage. A sign outside read, Psychic Services for All Ghosts. Wow, I had no idea this kind of place existed, Sarah. There are more ghosts in this forest than you think. It's got to be someone's job to take care of them and help them along their way. Suddenly, the front door opened and a geomancer stepped out. Zozo, meet my boss, Jerry the Geomancer. Jerry, I found Zozo here wandering through the Black Forest like a restless spirit. He needs our help. Is that a fact? It's nice to meet you, Zozo. Tell me, how did you find yourself in this difficult situation? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I was summoned and bound by this guy called Dorian, the Drowned Necromancer, and he told me that if I didn't serve him, I'd disappear in 100 days. It's gotten me pretty worried. Eh, that's concerning. I've heard of many cases caused by this Dorian fellow, a truly dangerous customer. I'm gonna put Sarah on your case. She'll come and help you build a base and get situated. And together, we'll get your body back. Thank you, Jerry and Sarah. I'm feeling better already. Let's go, Zozo. With the mission to get my body back decided on, Sarah and I journeyed further into the forest to get started. From day four to day five, Sarah and I explored the black forest until we discovered an area with a nice flat terrain. So Sarah, what do you think we should do first? I'd say cut down a few of these trees. That'll give you some of the wood you need to build a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. Great idea, Sarah. I cut down a tree and made a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. From there, I mined enough stone to also create a stone pickaxe, axe, and a stone sword. It's difficult to hold this stuff, being a ghost, but I'll try my best. That's the spirit, Zozo. 
I cleared enough space in the forest to start laying down a basic base, collecting some extra wood along the way. It started off with a pretty basic setup, with just a room for me and a room for Sarah. Oh, this is a nice setup, Zozo. I guess living with you technically means we're living in a haunted house. Yeah, I guess so. Say, this is probably a pointless question to ask, but is it possible for ghosts to eat? Because I'm getting really hungry right now. You're in luck, Zozo. I have an enchanted apple that ghosts can eat in my inventory right now. Enjoy! Sarah gave me the apple, and I ate it. Instantly, I felt my power starting to grow. I had 20 hearts now, and I developed a new ghost ability, warping from place to place. Wow. This is fascinating, Zozo. I feel so lucky that I'm getting to see it. From day six to day eight, I went wandering around the nearby Twilight Valley, looking for more rare enchanted food. As a ghost, my ghostly hunger was really difficult to satisfy, and Sarah didn't know how to enchant more food. It kinda sucks to be a ghost. I still have a lot of the downsides of being human, plus a bunch of new downsides. But while I was wandering around the valley, I heard some commotion and ran in to see what was happening. Maybe I can help someone. In the distance, I saw a Vindicator Chef, one of the most powerful types of chefs in the world, being attacked by a nasty gang of skeleton vanguards. A chef, huh? What a stroke of good luck. I used my new ghost power to warp over there and pulled out my stone sword. With all my focus and determination, I fought all of the skeleton vanguards until none remained. It was only me and the Vindicator Chef. You saved my life, sir. I owe you a great debt. What is your name? I'm Zozo. Zozo, a strong name for a strong hero. I am Victor, Victor the Vindicator Chef. And if you do a favor for me, I will repay your kindness by any means necessary. That sounds like a good deal. What kind of favor would you like me to do? Follow me and I'll show you. I followed Victor the Vindicator Chef deeper into the Twilight Valley, excited to get him on my side. From day nine to day 10, Victor took me to a clearing in the valley where a huge moon skeleton was waiting. Oh geez, that thing is a monster. You want me to defeat a mutant skeleton? I believe in you, Zozo. Seeing you take down all those skeleton vanguards makes me completely confident in your ability to slay this beast. Go forth. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Victor. I steeled myself as best as I could and warped over to the mutant skeleton. It immediately started attacking me and I started attacking it back. But my attacks were barely doing anything and its attacks were taking way too many hearts off of me. I gotta get out of here. I warped away from the fight and ran back to Victor, telling him the disappointing news. Oh, well, I'm sure you tried your best nonetheless. I suppose we'll go our separate ways. No, hear me out. I could really use a Vindicator Chef back at my base. You're the only type of chef who can cook the type of enchanted food I can eat. How about you stay at my base, and I promise I'll come back and defeat this mutant skeleton when I'm strong enough. That sounds like a good deal to me. Lead the way, dear Zozo. From day 11 to day 12, I return to the base with Victor the Vindicator Chef. I know it isn't much, but it's home. I'm going to make you a room. Thank you, Zozo. I'll get working on a little something of my own in the meantime. I got to work, gathering up new materials, and started building a new little bungalow for the Vindicator Chef to stay in while crashing at my base. What do you think, Victor? This is a nice little room, Zozo. Thank you. And you can come and see what I made for you, too. Go and check your room. I walked over and saw that Victor had made a high-end kitchen in my base. Perfect for cooking up the kind of enchanted food I could eat. This is amazing, Victor. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. But the kitchen is only one side of the equation, Zozo. I need some good quality ingredients. Perhaps we should build a farm on the base. That's another excellent idea. I decided to build a little enclosure and went out into the black forest where I found a bunch of chickens. It wasn't hard to herd them back to my base. I can taste the eggs and fried chicken already. When I returned to my room to relax, I found that Sarah the Psychic Siren was waiting for me with some new information. I did some research into Dorian the Drowned Necromancer Zozo and found some interesting information. He used to be a flesh and blood necromancer, terrorizing the overworld by raising the undead until one day the people rose up and drowned him in the ocean. Somehow, Dorian returned, and he's been acting on his evil plans ever since. Wow, this guy is really scary. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to Sarah once again and asked her what she thought I should do in order to get my body back. 
Right now, Zozo, knowledge is power. The more we can find out, the more likely we'll be able to help you get your body back. Head out to the Twilight Valley and see what you can find out. That's an excellent idea, Sarah. I journeyed out into the Twilight Valley, which reminded me of the time that I'd failed to defeat the mutant skeleton. Why is nothing ever easy around here? But my difficulties were only just getting started. One of the dread liches who worked for Dorian the Drowned Necromancer came from behind me, ready to fight me. I serve my glorious master, Dorian the... The Drowned Necromancer, yeah, 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 I get it. Let's just fight. Fine, but the way to take all the fun out of this. I battled the Dreadlich with all my might. He was a formidable opponent, but in the end, I defeated him all the same. And that gave me the XP I needed to level up again. I got bigger, stronger, rose up to 40 hearts, and gained a new offensive power, Lightning Strikes. Finally, some actually cool ghost powers. From day 16 to day 19, I found my way into the wooded badlands, where I continued my search for any useful information that could help me defeat Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and get my body back. During the first couple days of my search through the badlands, I didn't find anything. But on day 19, I happened upon a dusty, old book hidden out of the way. Yay, reading! I love that! But it wasn't just a fun reading experience that would engage my imagination, it was also a book that contained some critical information about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. It read, like all cardinal undead, the Drowned Necromancer has a beard of ice. Therefore, he must spend most of his time in the freezing cold, and he has a severe weakness to fire. So that's two useful pieces of information. Dorian has a weakness to fire, and he must be hiding somewhere cold. I can't wait to tell Sarah about this. But my celebration was short-lived, as suddenly a couple of dreadliches ambushed me, trying to get revenge for their friend I defeated back in the Twilight Valley. Thankfully this time, I had the power of ghostly lightning in my hands. I fired some lightning bolts at the dreadliches until they were destroyed. I'm getting my body back no matter what. From day 20 to day 22, I continued through the wooded badlands, feeling strong and confident about all the information I'd found recently. I ran into a nasty gang of hungry spiders and used my new lightning ability to zap them. These spiders are hardly a threat to me now. I decided that now was the perfect time to upgrade my gear too. I searched until I found an underground cavern and looked around until I found some iron ore. I mined the ore and smelted it into some ingots, creating an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I'm stronger than ever. Come to think of it, I have some unfinished business to take care of now. Remembering the debt I owe to Victor the Vindicator Chef, I returned to the Twilight Valley and hunted down that scary mutant skeleton I'd agreed to defeat. When I saw the mutant skeleton, I first unleashed a lightning strike, stunning it. Then I ran in and struck it again and again with my new iron sword until it was no more. A hero brine always pays his debts. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the base to let Victor the Vindicator Chef know that I had paid my debt to him by defeating the mutant skeleton. I can see that you've gotten strong, just like you promised you would. That's right, and I plan on becoming even stronger, Victor. They'll start calling me Victor too, because I won so many battles. But that's my name, Zozo. Won't that get confusing? True, I guess I'll just stick with Zozo. After my talk with Victor, I went to the underground cavern where I could mine for more iron. With my iron pickaxe, I was able to mine the iron ore in no time. In the same area, I found a treasure chest with a bunch of iron ingots that I could use to craft a full set of iron armor. I'm like a ghostly knight. I went back above and went to see Victor the Vindicator Chef again. He said he had some news to share with me. Zozo, I've made an addition to the base that I think you might really enjoy. He showed me a relaxation room that was perfect for ghosts like me. You did a really good job on this, Victor. We ghosts might not be able to rest in peace, but at least now we can relax about it. It was no trouble at all, friend. From day 27 to day 31, I was out exploring the same area of the wooded badlands where I defeated the dreadliches. I came across a farmer who was jumping for joy at the sight of me. That's not the usual reaction people have for Herobrine, so I went over to ask why he was in such a good mood. What's got you so happy, Mr. Farmer? It's because of you, Zozo. Those dreadliches were a real snake in my boot. But ever since you defeated them, I've had no worries. Glad to hear it. Slaying evil monsters and improving lives is totally my thing. Well, there is one small worry. 
When those dread liches was still around, one of them scared off all my sheep. I needed them for wool. I'll help you out. You can even come live at my base if you'd like. That sounds pretty keen, Zozo. I led the farmer back to the base, then set off through the black forest to find some sheep so I could gather the wool that the farmer was looking for. Taming them was easy enough, and soon there was enough wool to go around. Afterwards, I decided to do some decorating. These Herobrine banners will show the mobs that this base is home to one mighty ghost. With the decorations done, I found Sarah the Psychic Siren waiting inside. There you are, Zozo. You have to leave the base with me now. It's an emergency. What's going on? Come on, I'll explain when we get there. From day 32 to day 35, I left the base with Sarah and traveled through the Black Forest. Along the way, we were ambushed by a small gang of dread liches. Boy, does this feel familiar. I should have seen this coming. I am a psychic after all. We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. They really do say it every time, don't they, Sarah? They sure do. Hey, don't diss our catchphrase, or we'll have to get mean. Well, meaner. The dread liches began to attack, so I zapped them with my ghost lightning strikes. None of the dread liches I had fought before had seen that ability, so it took them by surprise, and I was able to quickly defeat them. We traveled on, and I soon noticed that Sarah and I had come to the place where Jerry the Geomancer had resided before. This time, it was completely destroyed, and the area was full of Dorian's dread liches. Hey, this is Jerry's place. Get out of here. It looks like we were too late, Sozo. This is exactly what I foresaw in my psychic vision. I knew what Sarah meant when I saw Jerry backed against a corner. He had tried to fight the dread liches on his own, but he was about to die. Zozo, is that you? It seems I won't be able to see you get your body back. Jerry, I'm sorry. We got here as fast as we could. Don't worry about me. Dorian will surely pay for this. Make sure you and Sarah protect each other. We will. Rest well, Jerry. I was so enraged by Jerry's death that I destroyed the dread liches with my lightning strikes until there were none left in the area. From day 36 to day 39, I made a return trip back to the Twilight Valley. It hadn't changed much since the other time I was here, but there was a fisherman at the local pond who I hadn't seen before. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Well, hi there, Zozo. I'm fishing. No, oh, I'm just kidding. My name is Fred the Fisherman, and I could use a hand. Sure, Fred. What seems to be the problem? I know I'd be able to catch more fish if I had some twilight worms as bait, but they're all way up there in the higher parts of the valley. Can you go get a couple for me? You can count on me, Fred. I climbed up the terrain of the Twilight Valley, enjoying the view along the way. With all that happened recently, it was nice to gather my thoughts for a moment. The moment didn't last long, though, because I was attacked by a giant. Even though it was big, it had gotten the drop on me. I took a few swings with my iron sword to make it think twice. Then I warped back a short distance and hit it with a few lightning strikes. I closed the distance back into melee range and finished it off with my sword. Soon after, I returned to Fred the Fisherman with the bait he was looking for. Happy fishing. Hope you catch a big one. Thanks. I only came here to the valley because the fishing in the ocean ain't that good anymore. Ever since that drowned necromancer rose from the sea, People have been afraid that he might have left a curse on it. He is really evil, that Dorian. A curse on the place he was drowned. Sure sounds like him. From day 40 to day 43, I was looking at the base after coming home from my short journey and noticed that it had been redecorated to look even spookier, which for ghosts and spirits is incredibly cool. This place looks amazing. I predicted that you would like the changes, Zozo. Sarah, was this you? I do like it, but what was the occasion? I wanted to invite some of my siren sisters to come live at the base. The new look is so they'll feel right at home. Is that all right with you? Of course. If the other sirens are anything like you, then we'll all get along nicely. A while later, the other sirens that Sarah had mentioned arrived at the base. It was right at the time she had predicted that they would arrive. Hello, everyone. Make yourself at home. Friends of Sarah are friends of mine. Thanks for being so understanding, Zozo. Living at this base together always works out when we compromise. Sure, the more the merrier. Soon after I greeted the sirens, the farmer who was also living at the base approached me so that we could talk. Well, hey there, Zozo. You're just the ghost I was looking to see. I have another job for you, if you're willing. Of course, I'm always willing to help a farmer in need. I heard from some other farmers that there is a mutant enderman running around and ruining everyone's crops. If you could take care of that mob, you'd be helping farmers everywhere. 
you can count on me. From day 44 to day 49, I took up the farmer on his request and traveled to the Taiga Mountain. That mutant enderman who was causing problems had to be around here somewhere. But it wasn't just mobs I had to worry about. Dorian was here on the mountain too, alongside a mutant zombie. Well, 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 if it isn't the hero Brine who defied me. How has the spirit been faring? You're probably close to fading away into nothingness by now. You wish, Dorian. My ghost form has only gotten more powerful, and I will use everything I have to get my body back. Easier said than done, Zozo. You really think getting your body back will be so simple? I was counting on your ghost to become a vengeful spirit. Wait, what do you mean? Do you think the restless dead can return so easily to the way they used to be? Why do you think I still carry the curse of undeath after the villagers drowned me? It's because there is no way back to life for us evil spirits. It can't be. Have I been getting stronger for nothing? Yes, embrace your rage and frustration. Become the monster Herobrine and forget about reclaiming your body. My undead will help you become what you are meant to be! Dorian the Drowned Necromancer disappeared into a fog, leaving behind the mutant zombie to battle me! From day 50 to day 53, I started my battle against the mutant zombie that had been sent against me. My lightning strikes were proving effective, but because of what Dorian the Drowned Necromancer had said, I was starting to get worried about using my ghost powers. I switched my sword and hacked away at the mutant zombie. I didn't use my warp or my lightning strike. It made the fight a lot harder, but I had to believe that I was more than just the monster hero Brian. I am going to get my body back, no matter what! The mutant zombie was defeated after a big struggle, and it dropped a spellbook once it was defeated. I took a moment to examine it, and I saw a flashback to Dorian's revival. He had just emerged from the ocean as a drowned necromancer, and was looking to get revenge on the people of the world for what they did to him, casting down lightning strikes in his wrath. He researched the legends of other powerful undead beings, and he eventually came across the story of Herobrine. It looked like he didn't just steal my body to make me into a ghost, he wanted to make me just like the dangerous and evil Herobrine from the stories. Maybe then, he'd finally have someone else as tortured and wicked as himself to hang out with. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed the farmer's quest to stop the mutant enderman in the Taiga Mountain. I found the mob in the process of a rampage, and with some nervousness, I approached. Can I actually defeat this mutant enderman without my ghost powers? The mutant enderman sprinted at me and swiped at me with its powerful limbs. My hearts were getting low, and I was still weakened from the fight with the mutant zombie. <laughs> Is that all the great hero Brian can do against me? I thought you were more powerful. That's what the story said. Believe everything you hear. I may not be the same hero Brian that is feared by everyone, but I am hero Brian myself. When I said it out loud, it made sense. I could use my ghost powers because I was the one in control of them, and I was using them to help. Take this. Ow! Lightning strikes hurt. I thought I could be the scariest, but now I'm done for. My ghost powers made short work of the mutant enderman. He dropped an item upon his defeat, which turned out to be an antler headdress. Wow. With this headgear equipped, all of my attacks would gain greater knockback. What a neat upgrade. I returned to the farmer at the base and told him that I had defeated the mutant enderman. It seems that I can always count on you, Zozo. As a reward for getting rid of that mutant enderman, I'll tell you a secret about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. What do you know about him? I was there when the villagers drowned him in the ocean. His last words were a curse to everyone. He said, soon you'll all feel the loneliness that I have felt. What did he mean? I don't know, but he probably had something real evil in mind when he said it. From day 58 to day 62, I managed to herd some more chickens into the base just to make sure we had a big enough food source for everyone. Then, I made my way deep into the underground cavern so I could do some mining for better materials. I used my iron pickaxe to dig until I struck diamonds and mined myself enough to create a diamond pickaxe. I equipped the new tool and kept mining diamonds until I had enough to craft a diamond sword, leggings, a chestplate, and boots. 
This new weapon and armor would serve me well in battle against the undead forces of Dorian the Drought Necromancer. With my first pieces of diamond armor and gear in tow, I returned to the base, and there were now floating lanterns of ghost lights around the base. I even found that a new room had been added. Sarah had been hard at work making our haunted house into a haunted home. This is just my way of saying thanks, Sezo. You've really been a friend to everyone after we lost Jerry the Geomancer. I feel like I could stay here for a very long time. Thanks, Sarah. That means a lot, too, because for ghosts like us, a really long time might mean eternity. From day 63 to day 66, I was down in the underground cavern making some expansions to the mine when Victor the Vindicator Chef came to see me. Hey, Zozo, I heard that you were still looking for your original body. There's a biome nearby where you may not have looked yet. Oh, really? Well, I'm glad you thought to tell me about it, Victor. I went back above ground and traveled to the place that Victor had told me about, the Wooded Badlands. I looked around for any signs of necromancy magic or a gravestone, anything that might lead me to my body. That's when I noticed a scary gorgon sneaking up on me. Boo! Hey, don't say boo to me. I'm a ghost. That's our thing. Sorry, sorry. I thought it would be fun to startle you. I didn't mean any offense. It seemed like she meant it. That was a relief, because I thought I would have to fight this Gorgon. You're a lot nicer than you look. I could say the same thing about you. You're the Hero Brine, aren't you? Sorta. I'm the new Hero Brine. My name is Zozo. Zozo, huh? I'm Morgan. You could still help me with a Hero Brine quest, right? I think so. What did you have in mind? Oh, you agreed. This way, a new ghost friend. From day 67 to day 70, I followed Morgan the Gorgon through the wooded badlands to find out more about this Herobrine quest she had mentioned. So, aren't you curious about this Herobrine quest of ours? Yes, actually. I was waiting for you to tell me more. Well, according to the scary stories about Herobrine, he is supposed to be the most powerful undead because of his ability to rebuild and destroy. Rebuild and destroy? Yes. Herobrine can destroy and rebuild the world however he wants. And anyone who is able to control him would be able to gain the same power. I don't have that kind of power. Not yet. That's why we're on this quest. You need to regain your power by phasing down another being that Herobrine fought. That's why we're headed to the lair of the Dreadbees. We soon arrived at a part of the wooded badlands where the dangerous mob, known as the Dreadbeast, was known to have her lair. Come on out, Dreadbeast. I am Zozo the Herobrine, and I challenge you. The Dreadbeast soon emerged and roared with anger. You think you're Herobrine? Please, I battled the real Herobrine in the past. You'll never be as powerful a ghost as him. We'll see. The Dreadbeast charged in, but I knocked her back with a couple slices from my diamond sword combined with the increased knockback from the antler headdress. She tried to resist and charge at me, but I warped out of the way and brought down lightning strikes until she was defeated. From day 71 to day 74, I thanked Morgan the Gorgon for helping me learn more about the hero brine from the stories and left her to travel further across the wooded badlands in search of my body. I was starting to get the hang of this new spooky hero brand story, and I was also starting to think it was going to end up being a pretty good one. But it's not the only story that you can find on this channel, so you should look for my other videos by typing ZO ZO into the search bar. I arrived at a rundown structure in the middle of the wooded badlands. I thought it maybe had something to do with how my old body might have lived. Yeah, I can feel it. I was definitely here before I was a ghost. But that's what you are now, so why try to go back? Dorian, it's you. Still chasing after the past, Zozo? You will become my hero, Brine, and I will use your powers to rebuild a world where everyone is as lonely as I've been. That's a terrible thing to do, and I won't let you get away with it. I tried to lightning strike him, but he was immune to the damage. When I swung my diamond sword, he struck back with his own weapon, doing far more damage than I could do to him. Fool, you actually thought I wasn't prepared to fight you. You'll get a bit stronger, but your ghost form will still fade away. Before then, I do hope you help me achieve my lonely world. What else do you have to continue on for? Dorian the Drowned Necromancer spared my ghostly life, probably because I was still important to his plans. One thing's for sure, I need to get stronger than he ever imagined I could be. From day 75 to day 78, I kept thinking about how I should face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He had been a restless spirit for a lot longer than me, and maybe I'd have to become just as evil as him to have a fighting chance. But 
I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be that kind of hero, Brian. Seeing that I was down, Sarah the Psychic Siren came to my room to cheer me up. Zozo, I foresaw that you would be sad, so I made sure to give the basin an almost invisible enchanted mist so it'd be hidden from attacks. That way, nobody will disturb us without us expecting it. That's really good, Sarah. Thank you. Let me tell you, Zozo, in my professional opinion as a psychic, I don't predict that you'll turn evil. I hope I can live up to your predictions. I went outside for a bit to get some air, and shortly after, Victor the Vindicator Chef joined me with a fresh new magic cake that he had just baked. Give this a try, Zozo. I think it might just pick you up. Thanks, Victor. I gobbled up the cake and felt a transformation coming on. I doubled in size and my heart gauge increased to contain 80 hearts. Victor sure knows how to cook. From day 79 to day 84, I went back to the wooded badlands to see if I could face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer again. I knew this whole thing would be over if I could just shut him down. Dorian wasn't here himself, but it seemed like he might have used some of his necromancy to mobilize a few random skeletons to fight me. With my lightning strikes, I was easily able to blow away these weak undead. I wasn't satisfied with the amount of searching I'd done here, so I examined the structure more closely. That's when I noticed doors that led to a dwelling where a pink pixie was staying. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Do you know anything about who used to live here? Yeah, I do. There was a village here that was destroyed by storms. A blizzard and a thunderstorm. There was only one surviving villager, and he was really alone. Was that villager Herobrine? Yeah, this is the place where Herobrine's story began. The land has been cursed, and plants have never grown as well here since. It's just like that curse that Dorian put on the ocean. I've got to put the hero in Herobrine and find a way to lift both of those curses. This may help you in your journey, Zozo. Pixie gave me a netherite helmet, an extremely durable piece of armor that would certainly give me a fighting chance the next time I saw Dorian. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, excited to show my friends the awesome netherite helmet I'd been given. Instead, I found a bunch of dreadliches invading my base, trying to find and attack those same friends. Oh, I can't let this slide. I don't want to overuse my ghost powers, but for the sake of my friends, it's a risk worth taking. I started firing lightning blasts left and right, destroying them quickly and dropping their morale. The rest saw my skills and took off running, but I wasn't going to let an attack on my own base slide. I came running after them. But while chasing them, I ran into a troll who seemed to be crying. As much as I wanted revenge, I didn't want to leave a clearly distressed guy on the hook like that. So I asked him what was wrong. I've been working on my novel, but I can't seem to get through it. I'm losing confidence in myself. You can do it, Mr. Troll. Just believe in yourself and try to get past the first draft. I'll be excited to read it when it's done. Thank you, kind stranger. I'll never forget this. From day 90 to day 94, I followed the surviving dreadliches into the snowy plains. It was freezing. I remembered what I had read about Dorian before. He needs to be cold. He must be hiding somewhere out here. I'm on his territory now. But I couldn't afford to worry about that just yet. I needed to track down and defeat those liches. Eventually, I caught up to them. They must have gotten exhausted and stopped. I finally had my chance. You guys are gonna pay for attacking my base. Oh, Zozo, you're so naive. Dorian knew everything. He predicted exactly what you'd do. And now you're going to get destroyed. You've never been able to destroy me before. What makes you guys think you're gonna be able to do it now? Oh, it won't be us, Zozo. It'll be him. A huge, terrifying Dread Knight stepped out, and the Dread Liches all ran off. He must have been one of Dorian's most dangerous henchmen yet. Even as a ghost, I think I'm gonna ache after this one. From day 95 to day 97, I went head to head with the Dread Knight. And he was as fast and as powerful as I'd feared. And as the battle went on, I was worried I might be doomed, until I got a second wind and fought back with all of my might. Soon enough, I defeated even the terrible Dread Knight, the deadliest of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer's henchmen. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but does this mean I'm doomed to become evil and end up serving that monster? But my worried thoughts were interrupted by a new discovery. When the Dread Knight was defeated, he dropped a notebook containing instructions direct from the enemy. Destroy Zozo. He is unworthy of the title of Herobrine. 
return to the ice cave when you are done. If you need anything extra to finish the job, check the chest behind the broken boulder. So now I knew that Dorian was hiding in some kind of ice cave, and that note about the chest really intrigued me. I searched the snowy plain until I found a boulder that looked half shattered, and then I found a chest behind it. And inside the chest was a battle axe! This belongs to Dorian. I can't wait to give it back to him. On day 98, I returned to my base to tell everyone who'd helped me how all of this was going to unfold. For all I knew, it might be my final chance to speak with them. Guys, I wanted to thank all of you for how much you've helped me. I never could have gotten this far without you. This final part is so dangerous that I have to do it alone. Dorian is more powerful than ever, but I'd rather be destroyed than let him use me as an evil tool. There's no way he'd destroy you, Zozo. You're too powerful and too good-hearted. And in the end, the good guys always win, and the bad guys always lose. Hear, hear. After you defeat him, Zozo, I'll bake a mighty cake that we can all enjoy. Ah, uh, and I'll farm all the best quality ingredients. You got this, Zozo. I have full confidence in you. You're all the best. I'm going to defeat him for you. All of you. And I'm going to get my body back. On day 99, I ventured back to the snowy plains with everything I needed to finally take on the big, bad beast of a necromancer who stole my body. It's time for me to show you the door, Dorian. Didn't actually take me that long to find the ice cave that was Dorian's hideout because I spotted a large guard force of dread liches waiting outside, keeping a lookout. Talk about an undead giveaway. There were so many of them, and they looked better armed and armored than usual. Dorian must have known I was coming and put them here to slow me down before the final battle. It's an ingenious plan. What can I do? I think I may be of service. I turned and saw that Morgan the Gorgon was behind me. Morgan, what are you doing here? Sorry for following you. I was going to yell boo again, but it didn't seem like the right moment. I feel like I've been missing out on all the action. Let me distract these undead creeps, and you can go in there and take down the big bad guy. Sounds like a great plan, Morgan. Let's do this. On day 100, while Morgan was distracting the dread liches outside, I entered the ice cave and found Dorian the drowned necromancer waiting for me. You made it through my servants. How? It's because I don't have servants. I have friends. Oh, spare me all that self-righteous foolishness. You can't talk your way out of serving me. I brought you back. I bound you. You belong to me, Zozo, and nothing will change that. I'm going to keep fighting, no matter what, for myself and my friends. And when I'm done, all you're going to be is a bad memory. Then let's see. Time to go back to the void, silly little ghost. I unleashed everything I had onto Dorian, not giving up, even as he fought back against me. I could tell as the battle went on, he was getting weaker and weaker. I pulled out the battle axe, the battle axe that Dorian had left for his Dread Knight to destroy me. I'm sure the Void will welcome you, Dorian. And with one more strike, Dorian was no more. There was a tremendous flash, and in the moment that Dorian was destroyed, my body was returned to me. Wow, it feels amazing to be back. On day one, I spawned in as a mighty dinosaur. Well, not really. I was pretty small and only had four hearts. I'm just a baby. Uh -oh. I looked around and noticed there weren't any other dinosaurs around. And then I noticed I was in an enclosure with tall walls. Hey, that's not fair. I want to run around and be free. I ran around looking for a way out. I couldn't find anything. Just then, I heard a bell go off and I saw some food being lowered into my cage. I was hungry, but I still needed to find a way out. The food lowered to the ground and I ate all of it. Then I got a brilliant idea. I held onto the hook as it was brought back up to the edge of the wall. I jumped on the edge, free from my enclosure. Then I jumped off and ran toward the jungle. Dinosaurs are meant to be free. As I was running, I saw a human in a car trying to chase after me. He started shooting at me. Ah! I managed to jump over a large tree that had fallen down, but the car couldn't get through. One human threw his weapon down in anger and yelled at me. We'll get you back. Mark my words. What a weird guy. I found a little cave and decided to hide out there for the night. I would go looking around for more dinosaurs in the morning. On day two, I woke up feeling very hungry. Man, I'm going to need to find more food if I want to survive out here. I quickly began chopping down some trees and managed to make a crafting table. With that, I made some wood tools. 
I feel a bit more prepared now. I explored further in the jungle and found some sheep. I hurried and got their meat before they could run away. I really needed to gain my strength back. Mmm, yummy. As I was enjoying my food, I heard a snap of a twig. I turned and saw a small ocelot trying to hide behind some bushes. Wow. Hey, do you want some food? The ocelot peeked out and slowly came and grabbed some meat for me. Thank you. Of course. What are you? I'm a dinosaur. You won't eat me, will you? No, I won't. Have you never seen a dinosaur before? The ocelot shook his head. I know that park over there has dinosaurs, but I've never seen one until today. Interesting. I wondered what that park was all about and why there weren't any other dinosaurs on the island. Thanks again for the food. You take care of yourself. You too. He ran off into the jungle. I need to figure out what's going on here. On day three, I gathered some more materials to make a little base. I knew that the humans would probably be back and I wanted to be ready for them. Once the base was finished, I went out to look for some food. Boy, am I hungry again. I managed to find a bunch of sheep and tried to herd them back to my base. But then, a bunch of alligators came and started attacking me. Get back, you nasties. I used my sword and my pure strength to fight them off. And before I knew it, they were all gone. Just then, I felt a surge of power, and I grew into a teenage T-Rex. Hey, I have more hearts now. I finished gathering the sheep and led them back to my base. I hurried and set up a pen for them. What a good day. On days four to five, I made my way back to the park to scout it out. Maybe I could learn more if I watched what the humans were doing. I was searching around and found some rusty shears. These might come in handy. Just then, I saw a bunch of humans driving toward me. I ran through some rocks and dirt hills to lose them, but they just kept following me. I roared at them, and the force almost toppled their car over. That's new. This caused one human to fall out of the car. The driver didn't stop and they left him. He got out his weapon and started shooting darts at me. Hey, stop it! I roared again, and the force made him fall over. I was starting to feel the effects of the dart. Ouch! I felt pretty woozy. What was that? The human pulled out a walkie-talkie. Dr. Holland, I have subdued test subject A. Come to this location to retrieve him. I couldn't let the humans take me, especially not this Dr. Harland. He sounded like bad news. I mustered up my strength and smacked the human with my tail, sending him flying over a cliffside. I gotta get out of here! The sleeping dart definitely was doing its job, but I managed to get back home before completely passing out. I'll have to find that doctor tomorrow. On day six to eight, I woke up, still feeling a little groggy. That wasn't super fun. I need to be sure not to get shot again. I went out and grabbed some food before heading out to gather more supplies. I needed some better weapons to defend myself. I went further into the jungle and spotted a small mountain. I started to mine out some of the materials and set up a crafting table to make myself a new stone sword, pickaxe, and shovel. Nice! I was about to make my way further up the mountain when I saw some little jaguars hanging out. They're kind of cute. But that was short-lived because they started to jump and bite at me. Come on, guys, I'm not food. They didn't back down, so I used my new sword to fight them off. It only took a minute before I defeated them all. Thank goodness for that. Otherwise, I would look like Swiss cheese. I ate some food to heal, and I headed further into the jungle. On days 9 to 10, I journeyed past the trees to the edge of the island. It was beautiful. Too bad there were humans trying to hunt me down. Just then, I heard a screeching of tires and saw a car coming towards me. Wow, I was just thinking about the humans, and then they show up. Maybe I have superpowers. I started to think of it raining sheep and nothing. Well, it was worth a shot. I started to run away from the car, but they caught up to me pretty quick. The guy I had seen earlier who had thrown down his weapon was inside. He must have been Dr. Harland. You can't run away from me now. You're mine. Go away. The car soon caught up to me, and the humans had me cornered. Ah! A heavy iron cage made out of chains pinned me down. Thank goodness for that tracker. We didn't realize it was attached to you until later because Jones never came back. But at least he did his job right. Dr. Harlan plucked something off my leg. It looked like a dart, but then I noticed a little blinking beacon. That human, Jones, must have shot me with a tracker a few days ago. I felt so silly. I don't belong with you. I belong out in the wild. Dr. Harlan just laughed. <laughs> I was confused and desperate. I needed to get out. Just then, I felt a whoosh of air, and part of the cage was broken. I saw a blur of pink whizzing past me. Run, Zozo! I ran, following the pink blur back toward my base. 
When we finally stopped, I realized the pink blur wasn't just a blur. It was another T-Rex. The dinosaur jumped down from behind cover and scared me. I knew there were other dinosaurs on the island. I'm Zozo. The dinosaur smiled at me. I'm Zoe. I'm your sister. Sister? Wait, back up. What? We're twins. I was put in a different enclosure, though. I heard that you escaped, and everyone was freaking out, so I took my chance when they went looking for you and climbed out as well. They really need to work on their security system. But hey, good for us though, right? Right. So, you're super fast? Zoe nodded her head and zoomed in a circle, demonstrating her speed. Wow. What can you do? Uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to be able to do something? Zoe looked a little uncomfortable. No, not really. Oh, wait! I can move things with my roar. It's like a sonic power. I showed it off. That's really cool! Do all dinosaurs have powers like us? No, I guess we are just special. Zoe seemed like she wasn't telling me something. I was going to ask her what she knew, but then I heard her stomach growl. Hey, how about I get you some food? You must be starving. That'd be great, actually. Thanks. We went to the farm and ate until we were both full. Zoe must have not eaten for a long time because she had double of what I had. Wow. How about you live here? It's safe, there's plenty of food, and I'd love for you to stay with me. Zoe looked really happy about that, and she readily agreed. Sounds like a plan. On days 11 to 12, I made an area for Zoe on the base. I worked hard to give her everything she would need in order to be comfortable. Soon, it was all ready to go. She seemed really happy to have found me, and I was happy to be reunited with the sister I never knew I had. I decided to go exploring a little bit to improve the base and the weapons that I had. While I was out, I came across a flock of birds nesting on some stones. They were beautiful looking woodpeckers. Hey, could I have some of that stone? They seemed friendly enough, but then out of nowhere they started pecking at me! Seriously? I tried to smack them, but they kept flying and then dive bombing me. I need to get out of here! I ran into the trees, hoping to get some coverage. They stopped attacking, but I really needed that stone. What am I gonna do? I looked around the jungle and noticed some long vines hanging from the trees. I had an idea. I gathered some of the vines, a couple small sticks, and a bunch of rocks. This should do the trick. I snuck back to the rock formation and attacked them with my new weapon, a slingshot. Take that! It worked perfectly, and before I knew it, all the birds were gone. Nice! And I have some food to take back to Zoe. I gathered the bird meat and started mining out the rocks. It took a while, but I finally got enough to make some new furnaces. This is awesome! I headed back to the base and showed Zoe my new weapon. She was super impressed and even asked if I could make her one. I happily agreed. She was super excited and shot with the slingshot towards the lake. Once that was done, I used some wooden logs to build a wall surrounding the base. It was all starting to come together. Yes. On days 13 to 15, I had a weird dream. I was back in the park, but it looked like I was in a lab of some sort. People were poking and prodding at me. I saw Zoe and she was chained down. Let her go! Then the dream changed and Dr. Harland was there. He was presenting us to a large crowd of humans. He had trapped us in enclosures and we were chained. The humans stared and laughed at us. It was horrible. I woke from the dream with a start. Whoa, that was terrible. I went to go find Zoe. I told her about the dream and asked her what it meant. She hesitated. We are lab experiments, Zozo. We aren't natural dinosaurs. Dr. Harlan grew us in the lab, giving us special abilities. Why would he do that? He's not just a doctor. He also owns this entire park over there. He genetically engineers dinosaurs for human entertainment. That's awful. But you and I are special. He made us specifically for a new exhibit he's working on. This was a lot to take in. We were being hunted by an angry doctor and his goons. It felt like the odds were definitely against us. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to find that Zoe wasn't in the base. Zoe! I looked everywhere and called out to her, but I couldn't find her. I wonder where she went. I looked around the entrance and noticed some footprints. They looked a lot like mine, but were smaller. These must be Zoe's footprints. I followed them, leading away into the jungle. They stopped at the mouth of a cave. Oh no, I hope Zoe's okay. I tried to quietly creep in the cave, my slingshot at the ready. I heard some muffled screaming, along with some maniacal laughter. That doesn't sound good. I went further down, and I saw Zoe. She was all tied up. There was also a monkey tied up next to her. Around them were a bunch of big, hairy spiders. Oh, gross. I charged, shooting rocks as I went. The spiders looked alarmed and tried to scurry away, but I managed to fight them all off. I hurried and freed Zoe, just as she yelled at me. Zozo, look out! 
I turned around, and there was the biggest spider I had ever seen in my life. Granted, I was only a few days old, but still. You're taking my dinner. That's my sister. She's not food. I slung some rocks at the huge spider before charging at him. He smacked me with his legs, and I was nearly down to my last heart when I remembered my roar. I let out a big roar. The force made the spider fall over. I then attacked with my tail and weapons, and within no time, he was gone. Victory is mine! All of a sudden, I felt power course through my body, and I leveled up into an adult T-Rex. Nice! I had way more hearts, and my tail could swing faster now. I helped finish freeing Zoe and the monkey. Thanks for rescuing me. I'm Crew. I'm Zozo. I looked over at Zoe, and she was shaking. Are you okay? That was so scary. I went out this morning before you got up, and I was ambushed by those spiders. I tried to roar, but they tied my mouth closed before I had a chance to call for you. I'm glad I found you. Being spider food wasn't really a part of my grand plan. Zoe laughed and crew joined us. You're from that park over there. I knew there were dinosaurs, but nobody has seen any. Yeah, we managed to escape Dr. Harland, but he is kind of crazy. He wants to bring us back so he can make money off of us and all the other dinosaurs. That's awful. How many more dinosaurs are there? We don't know, but they don't belong in there. We need to help them escape. Crew thought for a minute. I might be able to help out with that. Really? How? This island has been inhabited by dinosaurs before, a really long time ago. There was a T-Rex like you guys that had a special item that could ward off the humans. That sounds awesome. Do you know where it is? No, sorry. Legend says it's on the island somewhere, but nobody has found it. This was good news. Maybe we could make the humans leave for good. On days 20 to 22, Crew came with us to the base. He seemed to really like us and wasn't scared like most animals were. He was also really funny and would ride on our back sometimes. Once we got back to the base, we tried to get settled in, but then a bunch of jaguars showed up, trying to get our sheep. Hey, there's enough food for all of us. You don't need to steal from us. They didn't listen and just continued to attack. With our combined strength, the jaguars were gone in no time. We made some improvements to the base, including a treehouse for Crew to hang out in. He really seemed to like it. Hey Zoe, would you want to help me with something? Yeah, sure. What is it? I want to make a statue. I want the humans to know that they can't mess with us, and I want all the dinosaurs to know that there is hope to be free. That sounds awesome, Zozo! We chatted about the design and started on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? Also, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here on our adventures. On days 23 to 26, I woke up to the base being attacked again. They broke through the wall. I guess the Jaguars had some reinforcements and didn't like that they couldn't get to our sheep. Come on, guys, really? Zoe and crew joined me, and with their help, we defeated the Jaguars in no time. I noticed that one of them had dropped something, so I picked it up. It was an iron sword. Whoa, neat. I swung it around and nearly jabbed Zoe with it. Hey, watch it. Sorry. I looked around the base for a minute. Maybe we need to make some changes to the base so that it's safer. Zoe agreed and we went to work. We worked on expanding the walls and making our own areas larger. We ran out of supplies pretty quickly, so I headed out to gather some more materials. I also would really like some more iron so that I can have some better weapons. I explored for a minute before finding a large cave. I delved deeper and deeper until I found some iron ore. Yes. Perfect! Just then, a bunch of bats came out of nowhere and tried to swarm me. Ah! I hurried and started smacking them with my new sword. The last few that evaded me, I shot with my slingshot. Nice! I really like having a sword. I mined the rest of the iron and hurried to craft myself an iron pickaxe, axe, and an iron helmet. This will be perfect. I left, still feeling accomplished. I had a new weapon and a new tool. I felt like I was on top of the world. On days 27 to 31, I went to Crew to chat with him about the special item that would help me defeat the humans. He was chilling in his treehouse. I was too big to fit, so we just talked from a distance. Well, the legend says that thousands of years ago, many dinosaurs lived on the island in peace. Then one day, the dinosaurs saw a boat approaching. They had no idea what it was, so they didn't fear it. But then the humans landed, and they began to immediately attack the dinosaurs. They took over the island, and started to chop down all the trees and pollute the land. One T-Rex, his name was Ignatius the Great, he sacrificed his most prized possession to the volcano gods in order to gain the legendary item to ward off the humans. What was the item exactly? 
It was an amulet that granted him awesome power to grow to ten times his size. Whoa, that is awesome! Right? So he used the amulet to defeat the humans and protect the dinosaurs. So what happened to him and the amulet? I'm not sure exactly. That's all I know. What an interesting story. I hoped that it was true. It could be the answer to all my problems. On days 32 to 35, I thought some more about what Crew said. I really need to find that amulet. And if it's on the island, how hard can it be to find it? I decided to look around for something significant that could possibly help me. While I was venturing further into the island, I came upon a group of ocelots. One of them recognized me. Hey, it's that dinosaur that helped me get food. He ran up to me and started talking to me. His family seemed a little reluctant, so they stayed further back. What are you doing? I'm looking for the amulet that was lost on the island. Do you know anything about it? My little ocelot friend shook his head, but his dad piped up. That amulet corrupts all who hold it. You don't want it. Why do you say that? The dinosaur that held it, Ignatius the Great, began to use the power to unfairly rule all of the dinosaurs. The volcano gods were angry, so they willed the volcano to erupt, taking out all the dinosaurs. That's awful. Well, that's what happens when you mess with power you shouldn't have. I couldn't agree more. I flipped around to see Dr. Harland. How did you find me? It's not that big of an island. I knew I would find you eventually. I tried to run away, but Dr. Harland shot a dart at me. It got me right in the leg, and I immediately felt woozy again. Oh no, I can't pass out again. Everything was starting to get fuzzy. It's okay. We'll take care of you. Then everything went dark. On days 36 to 39, I woke up back in my house. Huh? Hey, how did I get back here? I went outside and saw the Ocelot family hanging out with Zoe. Look who's awake. My little Ocelot friend ran up to me. Zozo, you're okay. What happened? Dr. Harlan shot you and then you passed out. We worked together to move you. We met your sister outside. She had been looking for you and was worried. She helped us to carry you in. Wow, you guys are the best. Thanks. No problem. I don't even know all of your names. The Ocelot officially introduced himself as Marty. The rest of his family had M names as well. Melissa, Mo, Miley, you get it. Now that you're feeling better, how about we make some room for our new friends? Sounds like a plan. Zoe and I worked on making an enclosure for the Ocelots. I could tell they were scared to be living out on their own. By the time we finished, I could tell they were really happy about it. I decided to talk more with Marty's dad, Marvin, about the legendary amulet. I asked him where it might be, and he shook his head. All I know is that the legend says it was buried with Ignatius somewhere on the north side of the island. That's where his home was. Everyone claims that he was wearing the amulet when the volcano erupted. Interesting. I would have to travel a long way to go looking for it. But before I went back out, I got to work on the statue. It was coming along pretty great. Yes. I was excited to finish it. So, was your guess right? On days 40 to 43, I went out to go looking for more iron since I hadn't found that many deposits nearby. I went north and found a pretty big cave. As I entered, I saw a bunch of snakes slithering around. Not today! I quickly shot them with my slingshot, hit them with my sword, and also used my roar to send them flying into the lava. I was starting to feel really powerful. I journeyed deeper, and sure enough, I found a huge deposit of iron as well as coal. Yes. I made myself a little crafting table and set up a camp for myself in the cave. With the iron I had collected, I made myself all new tools and weapons. I am the mightiest of T-Rexes! Nobody can stop me now! On days 44 to 49, I journeyed to the north side of the island in search of the amulet. I was dropping through the jungle when I heard a scream. I snuck forward to see a bunch of alligators who had trapped a toucan. It looked like they were about to eat her. Hey, stay away from her! I dropped out from my hiding place and the alligators snapped at me. I guess they didn't like me intruding on their dinner plans. They started to attack me, but with my sonic roar and powerful tail, they were gone in an instant. Thank you, mister. I'm Zozo. I'm Greta. I thought for sure I was going to be alligator food. Well, I'm glad I was around. I've been hearing about the dinosaurs on the island. What brings you over here? I'm looking for the lost amulet of Ignatius the Great. Oh, that's a tricky one, that is. It's supposedly here on the north side of the island, but... What? Well, it's kind of complicated to explain. I think it would be easier if I just showed you. 
Okay, sounds like a plan to me. On days 50 to 53, I followed Greta further into the north side of the island. We were about to enter a clearing when Greta stopped me. Is that chanting? Yeah. I looked through the trees and saw a temple of some sort. There were a bunch of other toucans gathered around something on a pedestal. Hey, they have the amulet. Wait, Zozo! I didn't listen and I tromped through the trees toward the birds. They immediately squealed in delight and started bowing. Um, what's going on? Oh, great and mighty one, you have heard our call and you have come to retrieve what you have left behind. I looked on the pedestal and noticed that it wasn't an amulet. It was a... Is that a foot? Yes, great Ignatius, it is your foot. We have been saving it for you. I looked behind me and saw Greta was super embarrassed. These must have been her family members. The crazy side of the family, no doubt. Um, yes, I have been missing my foot. Thank you for taking such good care of it. They continued bowing as I went up and grabbed the foot. It was definitely from a T-Rex. Um, my humble toucans, where did you find my foot? One hopped forward eagerly. Oh, yes, we found it over here. We journeyed on a path leading toward a large rock formation. The foot was just sitting right here, oh holy one. Thanks, do you mind if I look around? Do as you wish, great one. The toucan left, and Greta flew up a moment later to rest on my shoulder. I should have warned you. I don't come around here anymore because they are all a bunch of crazies. I mean, who worships a foot? I just laughed. It's fine. It was exciting, to say the least. I began digging at the rock formation, and sure enough, I found more bones inside. This must be Ignatius. Yes. We managed to uncover all the bones, but there wasn't an amulet in sight. If he wasn't wearing it, where did it go? All the stories said he was wearing it. This was beginning to feel like a wild goose chase. I gathered all the bones, and we headed back toward the base. On days 54 to 57, Greta and I made it back to the base. She didn't want to be with her crazy family, understandably, so we made a little nook for her. She seemed to really like it. Hey, Zozo. It was Crew. He came over to me. What's up? I'm running a little low on food. Do you think you could grab me some more bananas? There's a tree nearby with some in it, but there are also some spiders in there. No problem. I went to the tree Crew was talking about and immediately saw the swarm of spiders. Yuck! I used my slingshot to make them fall out of the tree, and then I attacked them. They were no match for my roar, and soon enough, they were gone. Sweet! Now Crew can have all the bananas he could want. I used my roar to make the bananas fall out of the tree, and I gathered them for my friend. He was ecstatic to see all the food I had gotten for him. Wow, thanks, Zozo. Wait here for just a minute. Crew went to work. In his treehouse, he started mixing a bunch of ingredients together in the mixing basin. And before I knew it, he had a big loaf of banana bread for me. Where did you even learn to bake? And where did you even get a mixer? I have my ways. Here, hope you like it. I ate it, and it was actually delicious. Mmm, yum. Thanks, crew. He jumped up and down in delight. No problem. On days 58 to 62, I worked on the statue for a little bit. I was nearly done when I heard a scream from down below. The base was being attacked by some humans. Oh no! I hurried to run down to the base and noticed that all my friends had been shot with sleeping darts. The humans were trying to take them away. You let my friends go! I roared with all my might and the humans focused their attention on me. They tried to shoot me, but I dodged them. I managed to take out a few of the guards and then went to chase the rest away. They got scared of me and ran off. Good riddance. I hurried to help my friends get back to their homes when I noticed that Zoe was missing. Zoe! I looked outside the base and I saw her lying on the ground. She didn't look too good. Uh -oh. Zoe, let's get you inside so you can sleep. They didn't hit me with a sleeping arrow, Zozo. They hit me with a real bullet. What? Why? I heard one of Dr. Harlan's men say that they just needed one dinosaur for the exhibit. You. So I charged him. And he shot me. Oh no, Zoe. It's okay. The hunter that shot me, Brett, said that they were going to get the amulet from its secret hiding place. Zoe weakly handed me a map. They dropped this. Hurry, Zozo. Take care of the rest of the dinosaurs. Protect the island. And with that, my sister died. No!
On days 63 to 66, I used the map that Zoe gave me to track down Brett. They won't get away with this. I traveled to the north side of the island again, past the temple, and down into a large cave. There didn't seem to be anybody around, but then I saw a pool of water with a large glowing squid in it. There were a bunch of humans attacking him. Stop hurting innocent creatures! The men jumped in surprise as I attacked them. In only a matter of seconds, they were defeated. Thank you, Ancient One. Of course. I knew you would all be back someday. It was only right that the dinosaurs ruled this island again. Do you know where the amulet is? The squid nodded and pointed down further into the tunnel. I'm afraid the rest of the humans have already started heading down that way, though. How did they know to look for you? Dr. Harland was my friend. When he came to the island, he discovered me and studied me. I told him of the amulet in the cave, but he wasn't interested in it at the time. It wasn't until recently that he wanted to retrieve it. I guess he didn't want a chance you finding it and overpowering him. He ordered his goons to destroy me. I'm so sorry. That must have been heartbreaking. You can't trust those humans. They only want power. They'll do anything to get it. I'll go retrieve it. Good luck to you, friend. And with that, the squid swam further into the pool and disappeared. On day 67 to 70, I went deeper into the cave, which then opened up into a huge underground chasm. This must have been Ignatius's lair. Then I saw Brett and some other goons grabbing a chest from an alcove. That doesn't belong to you. Brett dropped his chest in surprise. He turned and sneered at me. It don't belong to you neither. I charged, ready to strike. The men got out their weapons, ready to shoot. Don't hurt them, just put them to sleep. The doc wants to save them for later. I managed to dodge all the darts and I used all of my strength to swing and hit the humans. I finished off his men and then went to attack him. Brett looked a little uneasy as I got closer, so then he pulled out his dart shooter. I don't want to hurt you, dinosaur, but I will if I have to. He fired his weapon, and it wasn't sleeping darts. It was a stun blaster. Ouch! Electricity pulsed through me, and I fell down. Hard! Just give up. It'll be easier. Then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. My bones and body aching. Then I remembered. The chest! I looked in the alcove, and it wasn't there. Shoot! Brett must have taken it while I was out. I felt awful as I made my way out of the cave and up into the jungle again. It was super slow going to get back home, but eventually I made it. On day 75 to 78, I entered the base. I was so exhausted and just wanted to be alone, but my friends came running up to me. Zozo, you're okay. We were asleep and when we woke up, you were gone. Where's Zoe? I told them all about what happened and they stood in shock. We are so sorry, Zozo. Zoe was a really good friend. I felt awful. I told them I needed to rest, and I went into my house for a little while. It wasn't until long until I heard screaming and shouting. I hurried to run outside, only to find Brett in the base, trying to shoot my friends again. What are you doing here? I need your blood, dinosaur. Give it to me. Ew, gross. No. I roared at Brett, causing him to fly backwards into the wall. I smacked him with my tail and sword, easily defeating him. I then felt a surge of power, and I leveled up into a full-size T-Rex. My roar could demolish anything, and I had tons of hearts. What did he mean he needed your blood? I have no idea, but that was definitely creepy. I looked and saw that Brett had dropped some things. I was hoping it was the amulet, but it was just a key card and a painting. Huh? The painting had some glyphs of humans shooting a dinosaur with a dart shooter and then growing to be huge. Have you seen anything like this? No, it just looks like something the old humans must have left. They probably just thought that defeating a dinosaur would grant them power. I guess Brett thought so too. Probably why he came back to hurt me. Creepy. I looked at the key card a little bit more closely. It had the park symbol on it and a label saying Site B. Huh? What is Site B? The park is Site B. Site A is the abandoned site down the hill. There's two? Yeah, Site A was abandoned because it was too small. Now it's just storage. There must be something important in there if Brett has a key card to it. Must be. On day 79 to 84, I traveled to Site A to go exploring. I was hoping the key card for Site B would work here too. 
As I approached the front gate, I took out the keycard, put it in the keycard scanner, and the gate clicked open. Nice! I followed the path and arrived at the main building that rose through the jungle, high into the sky. I slowly went inside the building and saw lots of boxes and cobwebs. The place looked like a mess. This place has been completely abandoned. I explored the building and saw an interesting roller coaster through the window. It goes straight through a dinosaur skeleton exhibit. What in the world was happening in this place? All of a sudden, I heard a noise from a back room. I approached and looked through the window, only to see an alligator looking through the cabinets. I wonder what she's doing. Then she saw me and charged at the glass. She then opened the door and ran towards me. Uh -oh. I quickly backed up and she snapped her teeth at me. What are you doing here? I'm looking to see if there was anything that could help me defeat Dr. Harland here. What are you doing here? The alligator looked at me. She paused for a moment and started speaking slowly. I'm also trying to get to Dr. Harland. He's been running tests on my family in order to make new dinosaurs. I need to rescue him. We can work together. Have you found anything useful here? Uh, yeah, there's some sort of weapon downstairs, but it's too heavy for me to carry. Maybe you can carry it. I started to go down the stairs toward the control room. As I was about to enter, I felt something push me down the stairs. It was the alligator. Hey, what was that for? You aren't supposed to be here, dinosaur. You've been extinct for years, and now you just expect to rule the whole island? The alligators are the real predators here. She snapped her teeth at me and almost got me. Hey, I'm just trying to survive here. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. She ignored me and kept snapping her teeth. I backed up and then used my roar to push her back. I hit her a couple more times and then after only a minute, she was gone. I wonder if there was anything down here or if she was just lying. I looked around the room and sure enough, it was mostly just trash. Then I noticed a trap door. I was too big to go all the way down, but I did notice some diamonds and other materials, wow. but they were out of reach. I looked around and there were a few more diamonds just laying in the corner of the room. Yes. These will definitely come in handy. I grabbed them and headed back to the base. I would definitely need some help scouting out the rest of the secret room. On days 85 to 89, I went back to chat with my friends about what I had found. Wow, I knew that the alligators on the island were super territorial, but that's just crazy. What weirdos. I know, right? But would one of you come with me back to the room? can't fit down there, but I would like to see if there is anything else of value. Yeah, sure. Crew and I headed back to side A and he checked out the secret room. He came up in a few minutes, super excited. There's a tunnel and it looks like it leads into the site B park. This was great news. Now I just needed to figure out a way to fit down there. Crew explored some more and said there was a bigger tunnel opening near the river. That's perfect. I'll go in that way once I'm ready. On days 90 to 94, the monkey gave me the diamonds and I used them to craft myself some better weapons. I didn't really have enough diamonds to make armor that would fit me, so I just made weaker diamond armor with a few chunks missing from the armor pieces. It would be enough to cover my weak spots. Yes. I tried it all on and I actually felt really cool. Not only am I a strong dinosaur with superpowers, I now also have some protection. I knew that I was one step closer to defeating Dr. Harland and freeing all the dinosaurs. Yes. On days 95 to 97, I finished the statue. It is in honor of Zoe. As I looked up at the finished statue, I felt a sense of hope and strength. I knew that I would get the amulet and fulfill my destiny. On day 98, I said goodbye to all my friends before heading out. Take care, you guys. I'll be back, I promise. They cheered me on as I left the base and headed out to the park. On the way there, I noticed a plane overhead and it was dragging a sign in the sky. Subscribe? Hey, that sounds like a good idea. You should do that so you can follow along on some of our other adventures. On day 99, I went to the river where the tunnel opening was. I broke the bars and headed inside toward the park. It was dark for a little while, but then I started to see light. The tunnel led to an enclosure with all kinds of other dinosaurs. I approached the gate and roared to break it open. Whoa, it's the T-Rex. They all gathered around me. Are you gonna free us? Yes, this tunnel leads to the outside world. I'll go open up all the other enclosures so that we can all be free. The dinosaurs whooped in delight and then a bunch of darts started flying. The humans came out of nowhere and started shooting at us. Uh -oh. Run, you'll be safe. They all started running into the tunnels as I roared at the humans. I trudged through the park, defeating the guards easily. I continued to the other side of the park.
On day 100, I was loose in Jurassic Park. There were a bunch of humans running around in panic. I tried not to step on them. I just wanted to find Dr. Harland. Then out of nowhere came a bunch of humans with weapons. They shot, but I dodged and roared and swung my tail at them, sending them flying in different directions. They quickly ran away, and I continued through the park to the big building in the center. I smashed through the doors, and sitting on a pedestal was the amulet of Ignatius. I went to grab it, but I felt a dart hit me. I flipped around and saw Dr. Harland with a large shooter. Come quietly, and I won't hurt you. No! I grabbed the amulet and felt a huge surge of power. I turned into a giant T-Rex with massive teeth and a mighty tail. So be it. Dr. Harlan backed up into the lab and closed the door. I heard some whirring, and then he appeared in a large robotic suit. I didn't want to hurt you, but you have ruined my park. You are a liability now. He shot at me with some tough shooters, but they didn't hurt me as much since I was so powerful. Yes. However, he soon started throwing bombs at me, which were not so easy to avoid. We exchanged blows, and I almost thought that Dr. Harland was about to end me. Ah, that hurt! Ha! I dodged that one! You will not take me down that easily! Take that! Ah, you dirty lizard! That hurts! But I was also doing some damage. I could tell some of my roars were hurting his mech, because sparks started flying! Finally, his mech started smoking! Now I was doing some real damage! Then I used my sonic roar and sent Dr. Harlan flying. The suit crumbled into pieces and Dr. Harlan was finally defeated. I made my way throughout the rest of the park, releasing all the dinosaurs back into the wild. They all seemed super happy. Once we all reached my base, I saw my friends cheering for me. Life was back to the way it should be. On day one, I spawned in as an awesome warden ninja, right in the middle of my warden ninja hideout. But there were no other warden ninjas around. In fact, the whole place was full of dread ghouls. While several of them were standing at attention, one of them was standing back and giving orders. Destroy everything, my dark warriors. We are under orders to eliminate every last warden ninja we can find. I didn't understand why this was happening, but I wasn't going to take it lying down. Who's giving you these orders, you cowardly dread ghoul? That's when I heard booming footsteps behind me. I turned and saw a huge dark figure approaching me. I was only a tiny warden ninja, and I didn't have any weapons yet, so he terrified me. I gave the orders. I am Shogun Skull, the ruler of this land. And all who defy me will be destroyed, including you. Shogun Skull pulled out a huge katana. He looked like he meant business. I needed to activate my special power, Ultimate Stealth. I practically turned invisible, immediately causing Shogun Skull and his dread ghouls to lose my trace. Where did he go? He's using his ninja abilities to run away like a coward. No matter, we'll find and destroy him another day. As much as I was ashamed to admit it, all I could do was run. I got out of there and ran out into the alien fields, looking for some food to satisfy my hunger. I managed to find some baked potatoes, but they were being guarded by a band of three brigands. Excuse me, brigands, would you be able to give me one of your baked potatoes? I'm really hungry. Would love to, man, love to. But here's the thing, they're all mine, and I want them all. So that's gonna be a no. The brigands attacked me, even though I was unarmed, and I needed to fight back. Luckily, my unarmed attacks actually did a lot of damage, and soon I defeated all three of them. That must be my ninja martial arts training kicking in. There's hope for me yet. On day two, after eating some of those baked potatoes and storing the rest, I left the alien fields for the ebony woods, looking for the right place to build a base. The ebony woods are dark and mysterious, perfect for a secretive warden ninja. I used my martial arts powers to start punching down a tree and gathered up the resources to make myself a crafting bench and used it to create a wooden pickaxe. Then I mined into the ground for some stone to make my first set of stone tools and a basic stone katana of my own. Now we're cooking with gas. I used my new tools to clear a tree and start building a new secretive ninja base. I did some mining underground because I wanted the base to be a secret, so most of it would need to be under the surface. It's a good start. I'll do more later, but first, I need to figure out what's going on around here and why Shogun Skull is putting a hit on Warden Ninja Heads. I went exploring around the Ebony Forest looking for clues until I found another gang of Dread Ghouls that Shogun Skull had sent after me. 
big mistake, guys. This time, I'm armed. I pulled out my stone katana and made short work of the Dread Ghoul gang, leaving only one remaining. Tell me everything I need to know about Shogun Skull. You fool. Even me talking about him seals my doom. You should know. You are a key part of his... Boom! The last Dread Ghoul exploded! It must have been Shogun Skull's doing. He really was powerful. But what was he trying to say? I'm a key part of what? Better keep watching if you want to find out with me. On day three, I continued searching around the ebony forest. I needed some kind of lead, some kind of vital clue, before I could progress any further. That's when I happened upon a small hut in the middle of the woods, where a strange man was just sitting around. Hi, I'm Zozo. Who are you? I'm a nomad. Oh yeah? What does that mean? It means I used to wander around a lot, but since I got old and settled down, I don't do much traveling these days. What brings you to the ebony woods, Zozo? He gave me some mushroom stew, and I sat down to talk to him. Well, I'm a warden ninja, and I used to live in a big warden ninja hideout with others like me. But then, Shogun Skull attacked, and now I think I might be the only one left. Well, that doesn't surprise me. You know, things were once more peaceful across the land. There were dangerous creatures around, and sometimes a fight would happen, sure. But overall, we lived in harmony. Until one day, all of the leaders across the land suddenly disappeared, and the Shogun Skull rose up, taking on everything and everyone. He's the uncontested ruler now. But we can't just let that happen. What should we do, Nomad? It won't be easy, but your quest is simple, Zozo. You're going to destroy Shogun Skull. From day four to day five, I still had more questions about how the world got this way. I just didn't understand how one person could take over the whole world. Well, Zozo, you must understand that the Shogun didn't just win by sheer brute strength. In his Shogun's palace to the east, he made some valuable alliances with different groups. First, he made an alliance with the Dread Ghoul army, promising all the land and food they could want if they helped him rise to power. Then, he made a deal with the bandit warlord, the leader of the brigands. They could loot and pillage as they pleased, as long as they helped him crush his enemies. Dread ghouls and brigands started attacking any village or settlement they could find, crushing the opposition to Shogun Skull's rule. But the leaders? Nobody really knows how Shogun Skull got rid of them. He hired some other mysterious group to do his dirty work for him, but who they are has always remained a secret. In other words, to defeat Shogun Skull, there are a lot of other enemies you'll need to fight your way through first. From day six to day eight, I thanked the Nomad for all the information he gave me and decided to set off and return to my base. It was getting dark and I knew that all the mobs would be coming out soon. But on the way back to my base, I saw an innocent pink pixie cornered by a vicious feral squall golem. I needed to intervene. It's ninja time! Pulling out my stone katana, I ran in and fought the squall golem. He was much bigger and tougher than your average dread ghoul, but in the end, my stone blade and ninja training won out. The squall golem was defeated, and the pink pixie was grateful for me for saving her life. That was so heroic! Thank you! I majorly owe you for this one. It's no biggie. I'm Zozo, the warden ninja. Who are you? I'm Polly, the pink pixie. And is there any way I can help you with your quest? How about you come stay at my base for a while and we figure something out together? That sounds like a good idea. So Polly and I returned to my base. I continued mining underground and created a cool room for her to stay in. I'm pretty pleased with this. Good. Now I'm on a quest to defeat Shogun Skull. Do you have any idea what might be a good place to start? Well, Shogun Skull is one of the greatest warriors in the world. You're gonna need to train really hard if you want to get good enough to fight him directly. Maybe you should seek out some kind of ninja master to train you. That's an amazing idea, Polly! And so I had my next step, seeking out a ninja master to train me. And if you want to find out what happens next, keep watching until the end. Some big surprises are coming. From day nine to day 10, I went to an underground cavern with my stone pickaxe to mine some iron for my next set of weapons, armor, and tools. I managed to gather up some iron ore when a huge hydra suddenly appeared in the cavern with me. There was no way I'd be able to fight such a powerful monster directly, so I activated my ultimate stealth and sneaked away to the exit. Sometimes the best way to fight is to not fight at all. 
From day 11 to day 12, I took the iron back to my base. I created a furnace and smelted it into iron ingots, which I then used to make iron armor, some iron tools, and an iron katana. And with all my fancy new gear and weapons, me and Polly the Pink Pixie decided to journey out to a nearby bayou to look for more clues. After some exploring, we stopped for a minute to talk. So Polly, what do you know about Shogun Skull? I'm trying to collect all the information I can. I think it might help me in my quest. Well, in addition to his dread ghoul and brigand armies, I know he has an elite group. Three warriors spread out across the land who help enforce his will. Three elite warriors? Sounds like I better take care of them before I take on Shogun Skull himself. Who are these three warriors? There's the Gold Creeper, a walking weapon of mass destruction that people always fear is gonna blow up. Then there's the Fire Elemental, a powerful being with mastery over flame. And finally, there's the Crimson Wizard, a crafty and intelligent sorcerer who has mastered the mystic. Wow, sounds like I've got my work cut out for me then. Before I could ask any more questions, a bunch of monster mushrooms attacked us. Even with my iron katana, it wasn't easy to take them down. These mushrooms meant business. But when I did take them down, I transformed into a bigger, stronger warden ninja with 20 hearts. Whoa, this is awesome. Better stick around to see what I transform into next. That's rad, Zozo. But hey, maybe next time we should go somewhere a little drier. This bayou is just gross. From day 13 to day 15, Polly and I returned to my base. I decided to spruce it up a little, adding some plants and other decorative improvements, and actually decided to make myself a proper room. Just because it's a secret underground base doesn't mean it has to be drab and dreary. That's when I remembered what Polly had said to me. Maybe next time we should go somewhere a little drier. This bayou is just gross. And it hit me, what could be drier than the Mojave Desert? Maybe I'd have some luck finding someone there. After taking some time to rest, I went out to the Mojave Desert. It was just as dry and hot as I expected, but there didn't seem to be much going on. That's when I was attacked by the Desert Lord, the ruler of the desert. Because he was on his own home turf, he was even faster and stronger than a ninja, and it was too late for me to use ultimate stealth. I broke away from the fight and stood back, but the Desert Lord still seemed ready to battle. You are a trespasser on this land. This is my desert, and I'll never let you or the diabolical Shogun Skull you serve claim it. Wait, there's been a misunderstanding. I don't work for Shogun Skull. I want to defeat him. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed you was working for the Dread Shogun. But why? Didn't all the Warden Ninjas used to work for him? My mind was blown. It all made sense now. The mysterious third group who worked with the Shogun Skull, it must have been the Warden Ninjas. But why was he trying to destroy them now? Desert Lord, you've given me a lot to think over. Would you like to come back to my base and we can work together to defeat Shogun Skull? Well, I hate to leave my desert, my true home. For now, it seems working together is the most sensible choice. Let's go, Warden Ninja. The name's Zozo, follow me. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base with the Desert Lord. I mined a new underground room for him, complete with a bed and even a few sandblocks, just to help him feel at home. It's not exactly the desert, but thank you, Zozo. This'll do. Seeing as how exploring had helped me discover plenty of interesting new things so far, I decided to continue visiting new locations, so I left my base once more. I went out to the prairie next to see what I could find. That's where I ran into a camel. Hey, Mr. Camel, I'm Zozo. Is there anything I can help you with? The name's Joe. And as a matter of fact, there is. For the longest time, I've wanted to build a nice beach house on the Rainbow Beach, but it's infested by wraiths now. If you could help me clean out those wraiths so I can build my beach house, I'll give you a weapon I've been holding on to for a while. Something you might find useful. That sounds like a good deal to me, Joe. From day 20 to day 22, I journeyed out to the Rainbow Beach to complete my mission for Joe the Camel. It was a really beautiful place. I could see why he wanted a beach house out here. When I ran into the group of wraiths he told me about, I drew my katana and charged in, slicing and dicing in a way that would make any warden ninja proud. Soon, they were all defeated. I'm getting the hang of this whole ninja thing. Then, I saw something quickly moving towards me and noticed it was the Gold Creeper, one of the elite Shogun Skull Warriors that Polly had told me about. Oh no, I gotta bounce. I didn't have any long-range weapons, so all I could do was run for my life as the Gold Creeper chased me. If it exploded while I was too close, I was doomed. 
but it kept chasing, getting closer and closer and closer. It started to get too close for comfort, so I jumped forward into some nearby water, hoping it would at least provide some protection. Boom! The gold creeper exploded. It was the biggest explosion I'd ever seen, taking a huge chunk out of the beach around me. But I'd survived. I'd completed Joe the Camel's quest, and I'd defeated one of Shogun Skull's three elite warriors. I'd call this a successful day. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the prairie and met with Joe the Camel again. He was pleased to find out I'd gotten rid of the wraiths, and less pleased to find out the Golden Creeper had blown a big hole into the Rainbow Beach. Still, a deal's a deal, kid, and you held up your end. You can take this set of throwing axes I have. Since you're a ninja, you'll probably benefit from some thrown weapons, perfect for those stealthy kinds of attacks. Wow, these will be so useful! Thanks, Joe! Don't mention it. If you need me, I'll be off constructing my beach house. With that quest taken care of, I decided to continue exploring the world. I reached the scenic Red Oak Forest, where I ran into a gang of mossy skeletons working for Shogun Skull. You're in some real trouble now. No bones about it. That was an awful pun. Eat axe. I tried out one of my new throwing axes on the first of the mossy skeletons, defeating him instantly. Then I pulled out my iron katana to deal with the rest. It didn't take long for me to defeat them, all except one, who I needed some information from. Tell me what Shogun Skull is planning! Ha! Huh, you're deluding yourself if you think you can beat him! He just sent out the Armored Vindicator! If that thing gets you, you're doomed! Doomed! With a strike of my katana, I finished him off! That gave me enough XP to level up, getting bigger, jumping up to 30 hearts, and getting access to my Warden Sonic Boom ability! This will be useful for helping me take on that Armored Vindicator guy, if I ever even see him! From day 27 to day 31, I started making my way back to my base through the Ebony Forest! I was feeling pretty good about all my recent victories and the new abilities and weapons I'd gained! I'm actually feeling pretty unstoppable right now! And that's exactly when the Armored Vindicator hopped out and attacked me! He was just as big and scary as the mossy skeleton had implied, and he was wielding a menacing axe! Your journey is at an end, Warden Ninja. If you give up now, I can promise it'll be relatively painless. I'll never give up! I'm willing to fight you to the bitter end! Good! I was hoping you'd say that. The Armored Vindicator attacked once more! Every hit he gave me was shockingly damaging! Even with all my upgrades, I couldn't beat him at my current strength! Instead, I turned and ran back towards my base, narrowly managing to outrun and lose the Armored Vindicator! That would be a battle for another day! When I reached my base, the Desert Lord and Polly the Pink Pixie seemed impressed with my new size! Looks like that training is really paying off, Zozo! You're looking swole! It's true! Just so much bigger and stronger than you used to be! And since you're here, I've also got something that I think you'd like! My research suggests that if you go to the Rose Fields and seek out the sergeant, he may be able to give you some information that'll help you with your quest. Wow, that's amazing news! Just be careful out there. I've heard that the sergeant isn't exactly the friendliest guy out there. With that in mind, I left my base and headed in the direction of the Rose Fields. From day 32 to day 35, following the Desert Lord's instructions, I went out to the Rose Fields. There, I saw the sergeant sitting down and meditating among the roses. I didn't expect it'd be so easy to find him. I approached the sergeant and called out to him. Excuse me, Mr. Sergeant. I've been told you have some interesting information. Could we talk about it? But the sergeant didn't seem like he wanted to talk. Instead, he got up, ran towards me, and started fighting me with his fists. I didn't even have time to reason with him. All I could do was fight back against his onslaught of punches. After I survived for long enough, the sergeant relaxed. He'd had his fun. Nice skills, kid. Sorry, what can I say? I like a good fight. What information did you want? I've been told you know a lot about Shogun Skull. I'm trying to defeat him. Huh. Shogun Skull. I fought against his army back in the day. I was involved in a lot of those battles. What is it you want to know about him? I want to know what the Warden Ninjas had to do with his rise to power. And I want to know why he wants us all destroyed now. That much is simple. As part of Shogun Skull's takeover plans, he needed to destroy the leaders and guardians of the free people to demoralize them and break their spirits. While his armies fought their armies, he needed an elite group of assassins to take out the high-value targets. 
That's where the Warden Ninjas came in. They are excellent assassins, and with their stealth skills, they could sneak in and get the job done. And they did their job very, very well. But once their job was done and Shogun Skull was in power, he knew that if the Warden Ninjas could help him into power, they might also be able to topple his throne. So he sent out his armies of Dread Ghouls and Brigands to destroy every Warden Ninja. You, kid, are probably the last one left. From day 36 to day 39, I returned to my base. Knowing that I was public enemy number one for Shogun Skull made me realize I could really do with some better armor, so I asked Polly for ideas. I think the Shogun has a base in the tropical rainforest where you might be able to find some diamonds. Diamond armor and a diamond katana would be a huge help for you. Excellent idea, Polly. I'll go there now. I didn't waste any time getting to the tropical rainforest and beginning my search for the enemy base. On the way there, I ran into an air elemental that lives in the forest. Excuse me, kind sir. I have a quest I need help with. Some nasty dead worms have invaded my beautiful rainforest. If you see them, do me a kindness and perform a little pest control, would you? Of course. I'll definitely get rid of those dead worms if I see them. I kept searching until I struck gold. Well, not actual gold. I found the enemy base, guarded by a pair of dread ghouls, and it was time to fight my way inside. From day 40 to day 43, the fight began! First with the Dread Ghouls. That was an extremely quick battle. I pulled out my throwing axes and threw one at each of them, defeating them instantly. Then I ran into the base, ready for the real fight to begin. And it would definitely be a real fight because the Armored Vindicator was in there, waiting for me! Finally, I can finish what I started and destroy you, Zozo. At least this time, you won't run away like a sad little coward like you did before. No, this time, I really am going to fight you with all I've got. The Armored Vindicator charged at me. I unleashed the Sonic Boom, stunning him. While he was stunned, I finished him off with my powerful ninja swing. I told you I'd beat you, Armored Vindicator. I'm a warden ninja of my word. With him gone, I searched around the room until I found a chest. Just like Polly the Pink Pixie had told me, there were diamonds inside. Looks like my armor and weapons are about to level up. From day 44 to day 49, I crafted my diamonds into a powerful diamond katana and even had some diamonds left over to make a full set of diamond armor. I'd hate to have to go against me using this bad boy. After that, I left the base with my new diamond katana in hand, looking forward to finding something to use it on. And as luck would have it, I happened upon a small gang of vicious dead worms. Hey, the air elemental told me to get rid of these. Time to kill two worms with one sword. Okay, a few more than two. With my diamond katana, I defeated all the dead worms with ease and destroyed the infestation. Not even the shogun himself could deny I was stronger than ever now. From day 50 to day 53, as I traveled further through the tropical rainforest, I came upon a cave that I sensed an unusual amount of power coming out of. This must have something to do with Shogun's skull. I should go investigate, just in case. But when I was about to enter the cave, a magical genie came floating out of it. Halt, traveler. You are approaching the cave of the fire elemental. If you wish to enter, then you need to answer my riddle. I remembered that the Fire Elemental was the second of the elite warriors working for Shogun Skull. I needed to answer the riddle, get in there, and defeat him. Okay, what's your riddle? I belong to you, but your friends use me more often. What am I? It was a challenging one. What do you think? Do you know the answer to the riddle? If you do, let me know down in the comments to help me out. Hmm, can you repeat the riddle? I belong to you, but your friends use me more often. What am I? That's tough. Hmm. <gasps> Wait, I've got it! You're my name! It belongs to me, but my friends use it more often when they talk to me. Correct. You may pass through. I entered the cave and saw the fire elemental waiting for me. He sent a few fire blasts my way, which I was luckily able to dodge. I fired a sonic boom at the fire elemental, then ran in with my diamond katana. With a few quick decisive swipes, the fire elemental was destroyed. Two of Shogun Skull's three warriors were destroyed, and I was ready to level up. I got bigger, stronger, and my hearts grew to 40. I had also developed ninja speed, making me faster than ever before. I'm on the path to becoming a true ninja. I bet the Shogun is quivering in his boots.
From day 54 to day 57, I was using my new ninja speed to zip through the forest. My powers were growing, but I needed some kind of way to hone my skills. Why can't I find the Ninja Master Mentor? I've searched everywhere and I still can't find him. Unless I've already found him and didn't even know. That's when it hit me. It was right under my nose from the very beginning. The nomad in his little hut in the ebony forest. The nomad who'd known a suspicious amount about what was going on in the world. I need to go back to the nomad right now. So I sped right back to the small hut in the forest, only to see the nomad outside again, waiting for me. I wondered when you'd be back, Zozo. Glad you finally figured it all out. So, are you ready to begin your training? From day 58 to day 62, the Nomad Master began his training. He said there would be three lessons. The first would be cutting down trees to practice my sword swings and to help me focus. If you can slice through a tree, then no enemy should pose a challenge to you. Next, he made me practice sword fighting with him. He was a tough opponent, but I could feel myself getting better as the sparring went on. And for the third lesson, he released a giant mummy scorpion and got it to chase me around until I finally built up the courage to defeat it with my diamond katana. Afterwards, I returned to the Nomad Master's hut. You have done well, Zozo, and proven you are worthy. I'll teach you my special technique, Ultimate Slash. Much stronger than a regular slash. Use it wisely. Thank you, Master. I will use it with honor. From day 63 to day 66, I returned to my base, only to see it under attack by a gang of dread ghouls straight from the Shogun's palace. Hey, get away from my base! I pulled out my diamond katana and ran in, taking them out with my ninja speed and ultimate slashes. It didn't take long for me to defeat them all, and that's when the Desert Lord ran up to me. Zozo, we need your help! Some of those dread ghouls kidnapped Polly, the pink pixie. We need to get her back. Oh no, where did they take her? Out into the ebony forest. You need to get after them, quickly. Don't worry, Desert Lord, I'm on it. From day 67 to day 70, I used my ninja speed to run back through the ebony forest, looking for the dread ghouls that kidnapped Polly. It didn't take long for me to find them. Don't worry, Polly, I'm coming to save you. Thanks to all my training, these dread ghouls weren't a challenge for me. I slashed through them with my diamond katana until only me and Polly remained. That was amazing, Zozo. Thank you. You saved my life from all those dread ghouls. I'm so sorry for ever letting you get kidnapped in the first place, Polly. Let's go back to the base. We returned to the base, and I decided that after all this, I needed to put in an extra line of defense, building a defensive wall around the base's entrance. Better safe than sorry. I can't risk another attack while I'm away like that again. From day 71 to day 74, I wasn't sure where to go next. I knew that I needed to defeat the Crimson Wizard before I could take on Shogun Skull himself, but I wasn't sure where to find him. So instead, I decided to go back to one of the deadliest enemies I'd left behind before. With my new skills and my diamond katana, I returned to the underground cavern where I'd faced the Hydra before. As soon as I entered the cave, I blasted him with a powerful sonic boom, momentarily stunning him, and ran in with my ninja speed, hitting him with ultimate slash again and again, faster than he could even regenerate from it. Thankfully for both of us, the Hydra tapped out and agreed to tell me anything I wanted to know. You're looking for the Crimson Wizard, right? No worries, I know exactly where he is. You just need to go to the Weeping Witch Forest. He's guarded by some brigands. Just go after him and leave me alone, please. I left the Hydra to his own devices and ran off. I had a Crimson Wizard to defeat. From day 75 to day 78, I followed the advice given to me by the Hydra and traveled all the way to the Weeping Witch Forest. A place like this is a perfect hideout for an evil wizard. Why didn't I think of this sooner? I continued to go further in until I fell down a hill and found myself surrounded by brigands, just like the Hydra told me. You wandered right into our trap, Zozo. There's no way you're ever gonna escape us here. I don't wanna escape, brigand. You and your bosses are the ones I've come here for. With my ninja speed and my diamond katana, I zipped from brigand to brigand, taking out each one with a single strike. Once they were down, all that was left to do was hunt down the Crimson Wizard. But the last thing I expected was for him to come to me instead. The Crimson Wizard appeared right in front of me and fired an energy blast that took out a number of my hearts. It was clear that he was the strongest of the Shogun Skull's three elite warriors. 
This is hardly even a challenge. Why don't you show me your good time, Zozo? Have you come this far just to perish? How's this for a good time? While the Crimson Wizard was distracted by his own gloating, I ran in and struck him with my katana. Hitting him so hard and fast, he was immediately destroyed! Probably should have fully defeated me before you started bragging, Crimson Wizard. And this means that I've defeated all three of the Elite Warriors! And that clearly meant something, because I leveled up into my strongest form yet, with 60 hearts! It's time to finally defeat Shogun Skull! From day 79 to day 84, I returned to my base to give Polly the Pink Pixie and the Desert Lord the good news. They looked amazed at my size and abilities. This is incredible, Zozo! It's amazing to see how far you've come, Zozo! We're so proud of you! Thanks, guys! I think I'm ready to defeat Shogun Skull. Do you have any idea where I can find the Shogun's Palace? I can help you there, Zozo. I went there once. It's deep in the Zelkova Forest, and I can lead you there. Thank you, Desert Lord. Let's go! From day 85 to day 89, the Desert Lord and I traveled to the Far East into the Zelkova Forest. We stopped for a moment for one last discussion. Desert Lord, it'll be too dangerous from here. I'll go alone. Are you sure, Zozo? I don't want you to get hurt. It's okay. I've been training for almost 100 days. I believe I can do this. Okay, Zozo. I wish you luck. And with that, the Desert Lord and I went our separate ways. From day 90 to day 94, I traveled deeper into the Zelkova Forest, searching for the Shogun's palace. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Where could Shogun's skull be hiding? Right behind you. I turned around just in time to see Shogun Skull standing right behind me. Before I could fight back, he hit me and everything went black. When I woke up again, I was in the Badlands, miles away from where I was supposed to be, with Osiris standing right in front of me. You're not who I wanted to fight, but I guess you'll have to do. I still had my Diamond Katana, thankfully, and used Ultimate Slash on Osiris. He wasn't that hard to defeat, but knowing how far I was behind on my plans to defeat Shogun Skull now, I felt terrible. All I could do was make my way back to my base and figure out a new plan. This is gonna be a long week. From day 95 to day 97, I continued making my way back through the Badlands, frustrated that Shogun Skull and his minions had put me so far behind schedule. And speak of the devil, a gang of dread ghouls emerged from behind some rocks. It's over, Zozo. We're going to be the ones to take you down. Better mobs have tried and failed. I don't fancy your chances. I didn't have much time to waste on these guys, so I hit them with a sonic boom, then finished the rest of them off with a diamond katana. Shogun Skull, your end is near. On day 98, I returned to my base, exhausted from all the setbacks that had slowed me down and gotten in my way. I returned to find Polly the Pink Pixie and the Desert Lord waiting outside and looking equally sad for me. I'm so sorry that all of this happened, Zozo. You've been facing the impossible. Perhaps we put too much pressure on you. Maybe the Desert Lord is right, Zozo. It took a whole organization of Warden Ninjas to deliver Shogun's skull into power. Maybe it was just wishful thinking to believe that one Warden Ninja would be enough to overthrow him. Guys, we can't afford to think like that. We need hope if we were ever going to win this thing. Shogun Skull is throwing everything at us, and that's because he's scared. Because he knows, deep down, that I can defeat him. So let's keep pushing and prove that evil jerk right. That seemed to pep them both back up. And if you want to support our adventures and see more, be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss another Zozo video. Zozo, if you believe it's truly time for the final battle, I'll lead you to the Shogun's palace again. Let's bring his reign of terror to an end, once and for all. That's what I'm talking about. Lead the way, Desert Lord. I'm ready to do this. On day 99, following the Desert Lord through the Zelkova Forest, I reached the Shogun's palace where we bid farewell. Of course, Shogun's skull was never going to let me just waltz in. The gates opened, and first, he sent out a band of brigands to attack me. We've been promised a real good payday if we can destroy you, Zozo. That's money you'll never get to spend. I ran in with my diamond katana, supported by my now iron willpower. I'd never let these brigands defeat me. I kept fighting until not a single one of them was left, and only I was standing. 
For this next Shogun Skull, I can take anyone you throw at me. But the next group of mobs didn't come from the palace. They snuck up behind me. It was a gang of silent assassins. They were much tougher than the brigands, but with my expert diamond katana skills, I was able to still defeat them all. By this point, I was getting tired, but I still had the will to fight. Is that all you got, Shogun? The gates opened again, and out stepped a huge warrior. It was the bandit warlord, the leader of the brigands who'd helped the Shogun rise to power all those years ago. Your army, Zozo. You've destroyed so many of my brigands. Do you have any idea how much effort it will take to replace them all? For that, I've decided I'm going to destroy you myself. Not if I have anything to say about it. I unleashed my sonic boom, blasting the bandit warlord right in the chest. But he tanked it. He was completely unharmed. Huh. <laughs> Pathetic. That barely tickled. Do you really think such a feeble attempt would really defeat me, the mighty bandit chief, second only to the Shogun himself? This is going to be fun. Worried that this could be the end, I pulled out one of my axes and threw it directly at the bandit warlord. To my surprise, it destroyed him instantly. Oh, I guess he was just bragging. Huh. With his guard force taken care of, all that was left was to enter the palace and battle the Shogun himself. On day 100, I entered the Shogun's palace and found the man himself, Shogun Skull, waiting for me. Well done, Zozo. You've proven yourself and fought with honor. For that, I will give you the privilege of a warrior's death. You deserve little else. All that bluster can't disguise how scared you are, Shogun Skull. I know the truth. You never would have gotten to where you are without people like me. And what the Warden Ninja gives, the Warden Ninja can take away. That's the true way of the ninja. How arrogant, Zozo. Do you really believe you can take away this? Shogun Skull began to transform into an even larger, more dangerous version of himself. The strongest I'd ever seen him. No more talking, Zozo. It ends now. Well, at least we can agree on that. The battle began. The two of us clashed katanas. We seemed equally matched in skill, but because of his dark magic, Shogun's skull was bigger and stronger. For a moment, I was worried it was over for me, when suddenly my warrior spirit kicked back in, and I found the will to fight again, and I also miraculously regained all of my health. I fought harder than I ever had before, hitting Shogun Skull again, and again, and again, until he was almost defeated. I'd never seen him look so weak and helpless. I charged up all of my strength, and with a single blast of my sonic boom, Shogun Skull was destroyed, and peace restored to the land once more. I love a happy ending.